Toma. <risa> Put your emojis together for Auntie Miracle B. What's the business? What's the business? Fall jumping off the chain like what's the business? Order in the box fort in the court. What's the business? I'ma pull up with the yay like what's the business? Eating lunch with the blood like what's the business? Playing hide and seek with Bubba, that's the business. A yard double drum like what's the business? 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 Catch me sliding to the trap like what's the business? Had my fish sandwich, that's the way, that's the business. Grindy trying to make a stack like, what's the business? The court can see me, I'm not there, what's the business? I'ma pull up on you like, what's the business? My name is Pika Brooks, that's the business. She gon' give it to the kid like, what's the business? Hear ye, hear ye, the box fort in court is now in session, that's the business. 30 shots in the clip like, what's the business? Gonna burst in flames when I'm in hell. That's the business. You don't gotta choose it. Like, what's the business? Hey. All my niggas on the job. What's the business? Should be in a padded cell for the record. That's the business. Trying to rob and you get dry. What's the business? Hey. Hey. You a walking stain. What's the business? I'm a builder gangster in the jailhouse. That's the business. I'm a hit your chest brain. What's the Hey, oh. we be running through a block like what's the finish? Am I muted? Am I muted? Am I muted? That's the business. Honey shots for a hot like what's the finish? Gang, gang. 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 Phone jumping off the hey. chain like what's the business? Hey. Hey. I'ma pull up with the yay like what's the business? This is how my story ends. Game over. That's the business. Eating lunch with the blood like what's That's the, the business? business. A yard double drum like what's the business? Angry Chihuahua turning law. That's the business. What's the business? 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 Pro say he need them pounds. What's the business? I'm Fortnite Kids Edition, that's the business. Hit my line when I'm in town, like, what's the business? Her I'm a reject Keebler elf, that's the business. They claiming this a try, like, what's the finish? I'm bring them round and mouth, like, what's the finish? Killing no hey. blow, like, what's the business? Are you my accuser? That's the business. Killing for these hoes, like, what's the finish? Never leave without hey. that blow, like what's the business? Only three people spoke up on my behalf, that's the business. Blowing Cali off the door, what's the business? Hey. Stupid link on the game, what's the business? Hey, I got it. Committed domestic violence, now I'm silenced, that's the business. I'm a guy, Charlemagne, what's the business? Hey. Pouring money, that's my lane, what's the business? No. 
if the sandwich wasn't bit, you must have quit. That's the business. Thumbing through our whole thing like what's the business? Hey, hey. Fall jumping off the chain like what's hey, the business? Hey. I'ma pull up with the A like what's the business? My ID expire in 2030, but won't be around to renew. That's the business. Eating nuts with the blood like what's the business? Hey, 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 like, what's hey, the business? hey, what's hey, the business? hey, what's hey, 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 What's the business? Hey. What's going on, everyone? Happy day before Thanksgiving. How's everybody doing today? I felt that it was necessary to bring our favorite job turkey. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. Our favorite job turkey to the masses for Thanksgiving. Um, welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, Kayla. <clears throat> Uh, Kayla, Monica, Breeze, welcome, welcome. Tony, Carol, Miss Washington, Erica Fine, no, Numfundo, yeah, Numfundo, I can't pronounce the rest of it. Uh, Dog Mom, welcome, 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 welcome. Ian Richards, Mama T, Sa Seamus, I always get his, miss his name, Debbie C, and DDB, DDB. Mm, I like that, DDB. Anyway, yes, Linus Wallace. I do uh, I do actually have Linus Wallace pulled up, which I'll probably use uh, as a uh, interme intermission in a minute. However, I had planned, and, and one more thing, let me know if I'm too loud when I talk because I know that in my videos, um, I'm loud. I'm louder than the actual um, stream. Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Yes, yes. Anyway, um, sometimes my um, my my levels are, are off, and sometimes I'm louder than the actual stream. So just holler at me and let me know. Hey, you're a little too loud, and then I can try and play with my uh, my level. Okay, but anyway. <clears throat> This is my proposition to all of you guys tonight. So I was debating about whether I was going to do the box fort stream. I know Carrie just did the box fort one. And I know that me and Carrie do our, our uh, commentary differently. And again, we're still watching this nonstop. But I'm going to give you the option. Do you want to do the box fort one on day 13? That was him in the yellow shirt. Or do you want to do day 14 where he was in a blue shirt where he's talking about oh uh yeah how am I in, in, in dishonor? How am I in, dis in dishonor? That one, or I can go back to day eight and go and do um some of the, the witnesses from day eight and then start with Detective Carpenter, or I can go to day nine and just do Detective Carpenter. So I, I'm going to let y'all decide what would y'all prefer to see for Thanksgiving. And I don't know if I said it too fast. <laughs> and while y'all are thinking, let me um, play some Linus because Linus is, is pretty funny. And if y'all have not subscribed to Linus Wallace, I'm sure everybody has by now, but please subscribe to him because he is a very wonderful um, a very wonderful artist, and he should be recognized. You said dishonor? Okay, so Monica say dishonor. So while we still thinking, I'll give y'all some Linus. Linus, don't flag me, please. Hey, Carol. Uh, stay that way. Stay that uh, way. Uh, your shoulders. Oh. Nice and easy on you. Oh. There you go. All right. All yours. You okay? No. It hurts bad. <laughs> Your shoulder? Bad. Bad, bad. Well, it's going to be sore, man. Yeah. But at least you know nothing's uh, nothing's broken, right? Nothing's broken. Well, why do I keep having this thriving, burning pain? <laughs> nothing's wrong. 
I know, I know the shoulders struggle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shoulders worse than the knees, though. Absolutely. I know something is wrong. I know no, something wrong. I know something is wrong. <laughs> My shoulder hurts too bad right now. Uh, I'm sorry, you. man. It, it hurts so bad, I'm getting teary eyed. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, I know something is wrong. And it, I haven't got any time off. I haven't slept. Uh, sorry about that. Time all that can just be their, their procedure. And, uh, right, right. No, I was just asking. Because you just ask, you know, you you've already figured out you're not a, you're not an idiot. You're not. Yes, a, he is. You're a smart guy. Right? Mm, that's debatable. I, I see that. Mm. Help us understand something. Where were you going, Darrell? So these parents I know why understand. their kid got hurt <laughs> just the way you want to know why your kid got hurt. So a kid I want got hurt. These? Look, I love his eyebrows, the animation, the eyebrows. I mean. That's freaking fantastic. A lot of people did. A lot of people got hurt. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> really, really. No, I'm saying a lot of people got hurt. Yeah, there's people hurt, man. Like that? To me, it's a pretty good injury if, if a doctor's got to check you out or you got a broken leg. Yeah, so what do you call my shoulder? <laughs> I'm just making a joke, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not laughing because there's there's nothing funny about this. No, I was just saying. No, it's not. It's never been that. Dude, I don't take my life as a joke. I was just making a joke about my shoulder when you just said, you know, if it's mm -hmm. a serious injury, if you got to get looked out. And I was just saying, I had to get looked out. But they didn't say it was serious. They treated it like, oh, let's say spend the night. You're the guy in cuffs. So it's, it's, it's hurtful. Aww. Can I show you something? Are hey, you? <laughs> you? Nah, I ain't got no. Um, it look like whoever. That's not you. That's not me. Oh, that's not you. No, I don't. Durrell. That's a Durrell. <laughs> that's you. That's you, Durrell. Why you say it like that, man? <laughs> because we talked about the honesty piece. You keep telling me that you you tell you tell the truth when you did do something. You it's take responsibility when you do do something. Now, I just want to say this. Oh. When you said it wasn't the <laughs> end of the world type thing, it is. It's over for me. Yep. So can't see your family. Can't see nobody. It's no guarantee you even gonna see tomorrow. Oh. I go to jail right now. I go to prison right now. At my age, it's no guarantee how long I'm gonna have to be in prison. Forever. It's no guarantee if I ever see my mama again because she's getting up there. I used to think that Oh my gosh. I Yo, I didn't realize that the, 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 the mama got like pink hair. Oh, this dude is a genius. I, you know, because my mom used to always tell me, you know, you, you got my strength, you're strong, you're strong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you go through that, you can't get through it because you have my strength. But it's like like, you know, I struggle with a lot of times feeling like I'm a failure. Man. Like, wow. I, it's probably a lot of times where I, I probably shouldn't even be here. I made a lot of mistakes. Oh. You know, a lot of mistakes. <laughs> almost 40 years old, and I'm still going through case after case after case. It's almost enough to just be like the hell of it. <laughs> you got beautiful girls out there that you want to see grow up. My sister never got a chance to see her kids grow up. She passed away. What the fuck do I have to live for? To sit in prison? Like, who would want to have their last moments in a place like this or in a cell somewhere or in a jail somewhere? If I had to sit in jail right now, my life is over. I know. I know y'all probably just think, oh, he's just talking. It's just it's crazy, man. I can't believe, man. I can't believe this is how my story ends, bro. <laughs> Oh Lord, that is genius. Okay, genius. If you have not subscribed to Linus Wallace, you should. Let me get you his channel information. Here we go. So y'all can subscribe. I'll share channel. Copy channel ID and paste.
Is that is that right? Is that going on this channel? Oh, you know what? Let me do this. Let me copy that. Okay. Here we go. There you go. That should be Linus's uh um channel. Please subscribe to him. He's got eight. 163 subs. We need to get him to a thousand. Get him to that big one thousand. Wow. So he can get monetized. So people like me don't uh, play his shit. Anyway, so I see that a lot of people have been saying between Carpenter and uh, uh, Dishonor. I think I've had more. Please with the baby, the line of. I'll play that one in the next intermission. I'm not going to do them back to back. Okay, so. Hold on, what day is this? Oh, this is day eight. And then this is day 14. Okay. So it seems like the consensus is, thank you, Wanda Joy. And welcome, welcome. Um, Sharon, welcome, welcome. Yes, I'm trying to keep you guys company for those of y'all who are cooking or those who are still at work, I'm gonna hang with you for a little while. You know, I'm not cooking. You know, I don't cook. Like a uh, Whitney said, Whitney don't cook. Miracle don't cook. I mean, I make salmon, but I don't think we're gonna be eating salmon for Thanksgiving. I think that's the right one. Day fourteen. Okay. Hey, Bright. Hey, Gunner. Welcome, welcome, everyone. And so I'm going to try to make this as family friendly as possible. And I am going to not use so much profanity. I can't make 100% promises. But um, hey, Gina. But, you know, he makes me angry. All right. So we're going to do the in my dishonor thing. And then um, if you guys want me to switch to something else, let me know. And then I can switch it. Because I'm going to be here for you. I'm here for you. All right. Let's get this full. Look at him. Hold on. Let me get some music. I like to have music playing when he's doing the stupid stuff. Let me set the scene for this fool. He's like, I'm getting it. I'm getting this shit started. I'm getting it started, y'all. Mm -hmm. The storm is brewing. It's brewing. Oh. Oh, the mic ain't on yet, though. Is it? Okay, hold on. Something okay. ain't right. Okay, here we go. A second copy on the defense table today. Hold on, something right. All right, hold on, let's try this again. Yeah. So the mic, the audio hasn't been cut on yet. I'm telling you what Darrell having for Thanksgiving. He having booty for Thanksgiving. Okay, we, we hold on. Individual. Okay, here we go. Hey, y'all. All right, so he's going to talk. Okay. Oh, thank you, Breeze Louise. I love that, Breeze Louise. Yeah, this is not me. The audio is on for the record. The audio is on for the record. <laughs> All right, there we go. I, I knew I went crazy. 14th Amendment due process rights. I make a reservation for those rights, especially, but all rights at this time. Oh, the record. I heard the emphasis in his voice. The all rights. All rights. He put that strength in his voice. All right. To reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is appearing uh, today in street clothes. He has a dress shirt and a tie 
uh, he's also wearing a mask. And I don't consent to being called that name for the record. For the record. This paperwork, I accept for value and return for value as it does not state the correct name. It states the name of my client, the straw man. I do not <laughs> this name in all capital letters. I do not identify by that name, nor do I know that individual. It states Look. the name of my client, the straw man. Look at Judge Doro. You see, she tried, she almost cracked a little smile there. <laughs> God bless this woman for keeping a straight face. I am not this name in all capital Look letters. Look at her. I do not identify by that name, nor do I know that individual. Not the correct name is states the name of Look at her face. my client, the straw man. I am not this name in all capital letters. <laughs> I do not identify by that name, nor do I know state the correct hey, one more again let me show you that so i can see her face hey tammy welcome welcome hold on let me slow let me slow down just a little bit just i love it name space the name of my client strummy <laughs> Look at her face. <laughs> I do not identify by that name. Then the I know that individual. Your objection is noted it's baseless in law and fact. And <laughs> that is simply a caption on a pleading uh, on the final name. jury instructions. That is not my name for the record. Right. The record should reflect, Mr. It. Brooks, I'm talking, the record should reflect that at 3.23 p.m. yesterday, all of the verdict forms were printed off and provided to Mr. Brooks. I also uh, provided him with an excerpt from the bench book on closing arguments. Um, I left a copy hey, on Reece. the state's table as well and a second copy on the defense table today as well so that uh, I hey, thought Taylor that Helpful welcome, welcome. information as we are um, about that time in the proceeding for the parties to uh, give their closing arguments. Of course, prior to that, the court will be reading through the final jury instructions. Um, the parties were also given uh, the updated version following the jury instruction conference yesterday as well. Uh, the total number of pages for that is 107. The court will be reading from the first 73 pages this morning. I do anticipate having to take uh, one or two breaks before I complete all of that. I'm, my plan is to do that uh, and then take the lunch break. Uh, and then when we come back from lunch to have the parties provide their, uh, their, their closing arguments. And then following the closing arguments, uh, the court has the final All right, uh, jury sir. instructions, which go through uh, the closing instruction, uh, instructions 460, 484, and all of the verdicts, uh, and then the instruction to the uh, jury um, 515 about their verdicts needing to be unanimous, and then um, selection of a presiding juror. The very last page, 107, actually is not until the close of the case and only following um, <clears throat> receipt of verdicts or some other type of disposition that would result in the conclusion of the case. It's the instruction after the verdict is received. So blah, blah, blah. If uh, y'all haven't noticed that Paisley is not around, um, Paisley hates the real and he left us. The alternates by random selection we'll use the tumbler yep he went upstairs <laughs> select three numbers out of that but that will be done after hey, Sierra. all of the instructions are read and the parties have an opportunity to give their closing arguments uh, your honor i accept for value and return for value any uh documents that you just alluded to i have not seen them Mr. Brooks, if you haven't seen them, that is by your choice. They were provided to you. I know on multiple occasions yesterday. Hey, Sadie, welcome, welcome. The garbage can. 
Um, the court retrieved the final jury instructions. I personally didn't, I had someone do it, had them placed on the table this morning and any other items you threw in <laughs> the garbage. So is that is that the paperwork that I had to stay here for over an hour for? Sir, I'm not going to discuss any further what we did during the jury. Like you had somewhere to go. You don't have nowhere to be. Yo, you have nowhere to be for the next thousand years. <laughs> you have nowhere to be. Instruction conference. <laughs> the jury's going to be brought jury out instruction a little conference. bit later. It, there's a conference. We talking about the proceedings from yesterday or after you had uh, told us we recessed. Mr. Brooks. I'm referring to after you call recess for the night yesterday. That's what I'm referring to. Those I, was, documents, I was put in the holding cell for over an hour because they said it was some paperwork that needed to that be. That is correct, sir. You were kept there in order for you my so ignorant. who had to finalize 76 verdicts to each, one not guilty, one guilty, and provide those to the parties. Um, is that so the, that's why you were kept there so those could be handed to you. My understanding is they were. I would need a bailiff to confirm for me whether he took those back to his cell or if they were put on his desk because he left them um, in the holding cell. Left them in what holding cell in here? I mean, I know it's so many holding cells, but I mean, it's the same holding cell that your black ass is in all the time, okay? I'm already on Friday morning. I take it, it's Thursday evening. Yes, it's, yes, it's Thursday. Hey, C. Dot. Um, C. I want you to know that you had a message that I want you to see. I, I want you to make sure you see that. But, um, yes, I don't want to, I want to make sure that we continue and, and share the love, the love. I have to look through his paperwork to see if they're on here. What holding cell are you referring to, Your Honor? The one in your butt behind the door. I, I didn't leave anything in that holding cell. I was just trying to figure out why I was in there so long. You got nowhere to go. Those are the verdicts. Yeah. All right. He has those. Items. Thank you. Is this the paperwork that was just put on my? It was the paperwork on uh, the desk when I came in. Uh, that was on top of my folders. Because you left it in the holding cell, idiot. Mr. Brooks, I know that they were. You were given the opportunity to take them to your cell because that is what I was advised. Whether you did that or not, I don't know. That's but they not are also on your desk now. I accept for value in turn for value any documents. Okay. We did discuss all of the jury instructions and the verdicts yesterday. So what was discussed when I was in the cell for over there an hour? There was no discussion, sir. The court was in recess. Madam Clerk was simply finalizing the paperwork based upon the discussion that was held on the record in open court yesterday. I was told that I had to stay there uh, per you. Yes. So that we could provide them to you and you would have an opportunity. She's to the judge. Can they, can they, can they have been them. delivered to the jail? All right. Um, I don't believe there's any other. So he wants, he wants his paperwork Ubered to him. Even though he couldn't get his Uber. So he's finally going to get a chance to get his stuff Ubered to him. If you don't sit your ugly behind down somewhere. Yeah. Need to address other than an advisement I will have for Mr. Brooks, but let me turn to the parties and ask if there's anything preliminary to uh, this phase of the trial, which is the jury instructions, the verdicts, um, and closing arguments from the state. Well, Your Honor, thank you. All right, anything else from you, sir? Yeah. Yes, there is. Um, yesterday, I uh, stressed to the court numerous times about me not understanding the proceedings. Oh, um, and essentially how um, decisions are being made on my behalf without my understanding or giving consent. Oh, the court made various rulings yesterday, I made findings and ultimately made some determinations. I stand behind the record that was made. I'm not going to explain it further. So a lot of those decisions were made when I was not present in the courtroom. I was in the other courtroom, correct? That's true, sir. Oh. Is that correct? Um, the record will indicate when those were made and where you were. 
I can't I can't see the record though. How, how am I supposed to know what the record will be? <laughs> Sir, the decisions were listen. I'm pretty sure that that lady that is doing the record, if she hasn't already uh it's not working on finishing the record, she is uh I mean, I mean, she just barely got it done. This had to have been just the most frustrating thing to try and, and and get the record to get all of this transcribed. That had to have been such a task. Whoever did this, God bless you. You need to be held in his loving arms for being able to do this. I probably would have quit. I would have been like, no, 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 uh-uh. I can't. It's too much. I can't do it. I'm out. It's not worth it. I can't do it made yesterday i'm not revisiting them today they need to be revisited and they, it also needs to be talked about uh ah. subject matter jurisdiction that has yet to be proven for, for the record. record i'm still trying to understand your uh -huh. honor, how um you made a a, a judicial determination ah. on my behalf which i did not give consent to to as you say, I forfeited my right mm -hmm. to testify. Because you acted a fool. Which I never did. I never said I wanted to. I never said I didn't want to. But that decision was made for me. Also, the decision the decision for the defense to rest its case was made for me, which mm -hmm. I did not consent to, nor did I say I was ready to rest, mm -hmm. or nor did I say I did was re ready to rest. Uh-huh. I'm trying to understand how all these decisions are being made with without my not only should she get a raise she deserves her own special seat at the right hand of god for dealing with this consent without me waiving any rights hey sandy welcome welcome i'm i'm not understanding how because none of my answers were unresponsive i just didn't answer the way that your honor wanted me to answer but i stressed yesterday but that's called being unresponsive if i ask you a question a listed a response and you give me some nonsense you know like building a box fort and um you know yelling and screaming and all this mm -hmm. other stuff you're being non-responsive that's exactly what non-responsive means i mean you just said i wasn't being non-responsive and then illustrated how you were being non-responsive if I don't understand something, how am I supposed to answer hey, a question that I don't under, understand fundamentally? It's not it's not me saying yes or no. Uh huh. And it's not me saying, okay, I want to waive this or that right. Uh. And I'm not I'm not trying to make what? an argument with you in any uh. way. I'm just seeking to understand how these decisions are made. Uh. If I'm letting the court know and I'm putting the court on notice, hey, I don't understand this or I don't understand that. Oh. Any other things? Otherwise, I'm prepared to address each one of those. Yeah. Um, there was a, a mention a mention of um, if there is a conviction in this matter, there is a mention of uh, Ain't no way sentencing, which I'm assuming there'll be a uh, some type of um, um, people may want to speak. I know on, if there is a conviction on my half, people would definitely want to uh, address address the court. Mm, really, the three people, and none of the three people was your baby's mamas. Oh, that's because you tried to uh, abuse and kill them. So, yeah interesting um there'll be a lot of affairs that need to be put in order obviously on my side uh, yeah, affairs of what you, you don't have no, the, your your house was the car so that's already handled the car you don't take care of any of your children you have no job what what, what affairs do you have to put in order all of the court cases that you have, I'm, I've, I've always been confused. What affairs is he talking about? When I think of affairs, I think of people who have jobs and they have bills and things they're trying to wind down 
or they have to put go to the lawyer and get things taken out of their name and put in their name where they want to get divorced real quick so they wife and liable none of this was going on here you have nothing but a bad hairline and dirty dirty nails um if it pleases the court yeah if there is a conviction in this matter i would like the uh the sentencing to to not be so quick i wouldn't either I'm, I'm asking if it pleases the court for the sentencing to be held off into a later time not a day or two or a oh. week mm -hmm. just so that affairs can be put in order properly and so that the people that want to come in and, and speak will have the opportunity to address the court so you can you can you can laugh at them and roll your eyes and be disrespectful to all of the victims. Is that the opportunity that you want to give people? Is that what you want? Is this what you really want to, to look worse, huh? I think if that's that a fair pleases, request, sir. If that pleases. I think that's uh, a fair request. I thought about that and <laughs> some more overnight that it, in the event there is a conviction that um, I would like to give the parties an opportunity to do that. I have no idea. How many people would want to speak my inclination would be again and i'm this is not set in stone if there is a conviction yeah you got that um, mortgage you need to, need to figure out mm -hmm. may ask the parties to just come back in on monday october 31st with uh kind of a proposed plan of how many people do you think will speak on your behalf how long do you think it will take um so that i he knew it was over with your real when he when that when Zach did that that uh cross of your rail, he knew it was over. All right. Um, so with all of that then, sir, subject matter jurisdiction, I decline to address that further. I stand by the written decision um, that I've made previously. Um, as far as the rulings made yesterday regarding uh your ability or inability to present further testimony and witnesses and to testify yourself. The court did make various rulings and findings that you had forfeited your right to do so by conduct. I'm not gonna further explain- Let me do a pause, my mom is calling me. prior rulings to you, I stand behind them. And I believe I made a very, very clear record. Um, so to the extent that you are asking me to reconsider any of that, uh, that's how I would interpret your statements here today, I decline to do so. So your honor, would that be, um... That's still not, I have no understanding to um, why I wasn't given the opportunity to place certain things into evidence. I, I have virtually nothing, nothing, zero evidence that I was able to place into evidence, nothing. I disagree with that, sir. You called, I think, nine witnesses on your behalf. Um, on various issues, including uh, the honking of the horn, the window tinting. You cross-examined many of the state's witnesses about police barricades and the presence of police. So you did I'm, present evidence. I'm speaking to the terms of everything that um, Your Honor asked me to do. You told me to uh, put everything that um, I needed to present to the course in writing. You, you made that ruling. You told me that's what I needed to do. I did that. Um, I, Mr. Brooks, you interpreted that. I did not require you to do that as far as evidence in the case. I very expressly told you there back, are rules of procedure and rules of evidence that govern exhibits, testimony, witnesses, et cetera. What I told you is that any requests that you have related to the case, if it's a motion, be put in writing. I specifically referenced the statute 80201 regarding how a motion is made and what it should contain, meaning it has a very express uh, request for relief and states the law and the facts upon which the request is being made. Um, again, I'm not gonna revisit the prior rulings. Um, I stand behind them. And to the extent that the record does not have, uh, meaning the record before the jury and the evidence does not have certain pieces of information, evidence or testimony that you uh, wanted to present, 
Um, you forfeited that opportunity <laughs> yesterday based upon your conduct. Uh -huh. How did I forfeit the opportunity? Again, I'm not going to revisit that. So what I, I will tell you is this. Thank you, Ben. Uh, this the jury is here. To be able to place into evidence. Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to debate this further. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to debate. I'm trying to understand. To respect the fact that I've made rulings. Your Honor, that's that's you it's made not a my job determination. to explain them you made to it. you. I'm not asking you to explain anything. You should You're be. You're misinterpreting what I'm trying to ask you and trying to tell you. You're misinterpreting it. With all due respect, Your Honor. Look at his nails. Like, for real. Look at his nails. This makes me so angry. Like, a man should not have nails that you got the little white part showing. And then the nails are all uneven. It's just, oh, it just bothers me so badly. And I don't know who, who got him these clothes that's two sizes too big. Because you can see how big it is, by the way, this tie is. And I think probably the button is broke. That's why <laughs> his tie is like this. There's no top button. The jail did him wrong. I, when you tell me this is what you need to do, uh -huh. I'm going to take it by what you're telling me that I need to do. Uh -huh. If I needed to make anything request-wise or anything that I needed to present to the court, uh -huh. it has to be in writing. He's so stupid. You told me to do that. I did it. You also brought up when I asked numerous times before, before yeah. when would I have a chance to present things into evidence? You told me we were not at the evidentiary phase of the trial yet. But you was at the evidentiary phase of the trial the day before when you built the box fort. And the lady asked you, Judge Doro, repeatedly was like, hey, are you going to be calling any more witnesses? Uh, I'm going to ask you some questions. If you fail to respond, you're going to forfeit your right to uh, to call any more witnesses, and you're going to forfeit your right to testify on your own behalf. You would have needed to have testified on your own behalf for all of this BS that you're talking about to be admitted into evidence. And you were told this. Before. So I took that as saying, okay, well. Hey, Bob Kitten. At some point, I will have the opportunity to place things in the evidence that need to be put in evidence for the record. So I, I'm not understanding how no. a decision can be made for me to actually forfeit being able to put things into the record that need to be placed into the record. All these things are, are, are things that, quite frankly, allow me to put on a defense. Uh, things that need to be known, things that should be in the record as far as filings, as far as uh, the uh, ICFs that I was told to by you uh -huh. to address certain ICFs either to you or to the clerk, clerk of court, uh -huh. which I did. Yeah. And received copies for all of them except until last week. It was a few of them that I didn't receive copies for that I'm still wondering why I haven't received those copies when I received the copies of all the ones before that. Oh, because the judge was being nice to you and gave you copies. You acted a fool. And then the judge said, you're going to have to just wait till you get them from the clerk of court. So I'm guessing the clerk of court is saying, you don't have nothing to do and nowhere to go. You'll give it to, you'll get it when I give it to you. That's what I would have said. Oh, he'll get it when he get it. He ain't going nowhere. But in, in, in terms of that, I did what, your honor asked me to do. And these are things that were part of my defense that mm -hmm. needed to be placed into the record. When this jury comes oh, up, I expect that you will honor the decisions that were made, not agree, but you will honor them and not interrupt the court or these proceedings as I instruct the jury. 
So how am I supposed to put these things in the record that need to be in the Mr. record? Mr. Brooks, I'm well aware of the effect my ruling had, and I'm not going to debate it with you. I'm ju I just want to know how am I supposed to get these things on the record? How am I supposed to? Because the filings that I gave, you actually filed and gave me the copies back. So are those in the record? Mr. Brooks, I'm, I'm just, no longer I'm going just seeking to talk to understand. about this. I'm just seeking to understand. Mr. Brooks, I cannot explain procedure or evidence the filings that or I the filed. rulings or I'm the asking law a question, to Your Honor. you. I'm merely asking a question. The filings that I presented to Your Honor. Any filings with the this court. court are in the court record. That does not mean they're evidence, sir. And I've told you That's that not previously. what I'm asking. I'm asking, are the filings part of the record? What? The filings Wait a minute. She just answered your question. Let's re reference this again. Are in the court record. That does not mean they're evidence. Can I understand, Mr. Brooks? I cannot explain procedure or evidence. The filings that or the I filed. Rulings or I'm the asking a question, Your Honor. You. I'm merely asking a question. The filings that I presented to Your Honor. Any filings with the this court. court are in the court record. That does not mean they're evidence, sir. So they're in the court record. Is the answer to the question? And I've told you that's that. That's not previously. what I'm asking. I'm asking: Are the filings part of the record? She just. It's part of the court record. She literally just said it. Oh boy, she just, oh Lord. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's continue. The filings that were filed in timestamp that were notarized. Mm, mm. that I presented to the court, all the filings. You share. The appearance bonds, the, the statement of particular. All of that is irrelevant crap that is not going to help your defense and appearance bond and statement of particulars. What's that got to do with you killing six people and injuring, oh, 76 others? What's that got to do with anything? There's the, the notice of special appearance, the, the, uh, the, the court docket sheet. Hey, Steve. Your oath of office, everything that I tried to present into the record. What her oath of office got to do with you killing six uh, six people and, uh, and and injuring 76 other people? What that got to do with any of that, sir? How am I not able to make them part of the record? They are so part they of the were record. Filed because you, you presented them to the court during the course of this case. Stop. Anything that was not offered as an exhibit and received during the evidentiary phase hey, is not evidence in this trial. That's what I attempted to do, and you told me that I couldn't. He's so stupid. You told Mr. Me, Brooks, I am bringing this jury Your out. Honor, with all respect, me. you told me that we were not at the evidence. When I said I have uh, uh, exhibits as well, exhibits. I have stuff that I want to put into the record. I even asked. I said, Mr. Brooks, may I give an offer? Are offering to evidence. I'm these, going to stop you things. once again. I'm not going to have this discussion and debate. The evidentiary phase of this trial is closed. It should not be though, the jury. I understand your lack of consent. Your objection so when would I be is able to put, for the When record. would I be able to put vital information into the record, which I haven't had the opportunity to that do? That opportunity has closed for you, sir. So, so you saying basically you're prejudice, you're prejudicing my defense. By me not being able to present things into evidence, offer into evidence, filings in important paperwork and documents. Mr. No, no, no. She's not pre prejudicing your defense. You fucked yourself by acting a fool the day before. And she gave you hours and hours and hours and hours of opportunity and you sat and threw a tantrum and hid behind a box fort. That's what happened. It's like he just he forgets that you know what happened five minutes before. Brooks, and you How forfeited your right to do that by your conduct yesterday, and I stand behind that decision. I asked, I'm going I asked to do before the yesterday. Sir. Your Honor, I, I asked this following. before yesterday. You have not honored my request to you that you cease. Debating me on prior. I'm not trying to debate. Court. I'm trying to. I'm trying to understand why my due process is being violated. Mr. Brooks, the record speaks for itself. 
No, the record I'm, just look, look, the, the due process is process is being vi violated, like his booty hole in prison being violated. <laughs> Four thousand years. I'm going to take it, it a does five not... minute recess. Woo! When I come back out, uh huh. The jury will also be coming out. Oh. I'm advising you. There will be no, there will be no multiple opportunities where I. Uh, give you to conform your conduct to the rules of decorum. Well, then, and then just hold me in contempt. You, then there you, go. you are hold hereby me in contempt because I didn't even. I'm trying to seek to understand. If you start talking about subject matter jurisdiction or mm -hmm. any of these other, it issues, needs to be addressed. Or in any way, we're not talking about subject matter jurisdiction. We're talking about why my why my due process I has will been violated. Excuse the jury and you. The booty hole being violated. Hey, Arta Artemisia Miasia. You, let me know if I pronounced that wrong. I probably did. We'll be removed Honor, to the other courtroom. We're talking about the 14th Amendment, Section right. I'm 1. taking a five minute break. We are Your Honor, I don't when agree I to a stop. I don't agree to a stop. <laughs> Your Honor, as a okay. So um, I, I do an intermission because we, we you don't agree to an stop. Let me give you some more Linus. Uh, let me see. It's only like five videos. Uh, let me see what's the next one I'm going to do. I guess I'll go ahead and do um, this one here. Hold on. Give me some Linus. From the company that brought you Alec Murdali comes another special toy. Prison Playmates is proud to present our new prison pal, Dolly Brooks. Dolly Brooks comes with over 30 fun and quirky phrases. I do not consent to or agree to being part of that. Oh, Dolly. Nobody cares. Dolly Brooks also comes with a unique set of accessories, like the big boy suit, <laughs> a reversible mask, and his important documents. Get your facts straight. Oh, that's hard. I'm not going to see here unless somebody be me accurate on the record and lie on the record. Oh, Dolly, you're right. I forgot about the documents in this special box for for just 15 extra dollars. <laughs> Are you happy that I mentioned them too, Dolly? I just want the truth to be told. But that's not all, Dolly. Because for the first 500 orders, we'll also include these special shock shackles, absolutely free. What do you think about them, Dolly? should be noted that I had a shock device on my ankles. It is a fact. I was told that there were a shock device, which I know how a shock device looks because I've, I've been through this before in Milwaukee. Dolly Brooks is endless fun for all ages. You just never know what he's going to say next. Can we move on to subject matter jurisdiction that hasn't been proved for the record? Just remember, if you order now, you can get Dolly Brooks, his extra courtroom set, and the shock shackles for just $25.99. <laughs> Don't wait. Call now. I accept the value in time for value. To order your Dolly Brooks, just call 8675-30. That's 8675-30. Call now. From the call. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> Again, if y'all have not subscribed to uh, Linus, please subscribe to him. Because we need some more of these animations. Um, okay, hold on. Let me get back to the next part of this day here. Hold on here. The shock shackles. All right, hold on. All righty, here we go. And this is the one I'm looking at. Very watch day 14. All right. All right. Let's continue. And upon your refusal, that would be looked at. Is oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Um, it has yet to be proven for the record. For the record. Make sure y'all smash on the like refusal, button. Refusal that would be looked at is dishonor. I'm not addressing it. The jury's coming out. So there's is that a, a tacit agreement? 
Oh, he said test it, y'all. Any questions as a public servant, Your Honor? Therefore, being that's dishonor. Thank you, Sierra. Are you going to honor your oath of office? Stand. I'm not addressing it. Are you going to honor your oath of office? Thank you, Bob. So I'll take that as a tacit agreement that you're not going to honor your oath of office. All right, I'm going to have to excuse the jury. I love the jury. It's like, again? They're like, I'm sick of this shit. Mr. Brooks, I warned you that if you made any interruptions when they came out, you would be removed to the courtroom. That's what I'm doing right now. You're forfeiting your right to be present in this courtroom unless you can promise me right now you'll respect prior rulings of this court and not interrupt this next phase of the trial, which Thank is you, Joanne. the court reading the jury instructions without interruption from you. Can you do that? Have I acted in dishonor, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, I very expressly warned you. Have I acted in dishonor? You have <laughs> disobeyed a direct order from this court. Have I acted in dishonor? You have disrupted these proceedings. I have not disrupted these proceedings. Sir, can you pledge morning? to me nope. that when this jury comes back out, that you will remain silent and not reference things like subject matter jurisdiction, the court's oath of office, tacit agreements, or anything. Can you pledge that you will respect these proceedings and this jury by not interrupting? Have I acted in dishonor, Your Honor? I will ask you one more time. Can you pledge to be quiet, sir? Why should I Why should I have to make a pledge, Your Honor? Have I acted in dishonor? Because of your <laughs> Illinois versus Allen, I believe you've already forfeited your right to be here, but you can reclaim that as soon as you are willing to conduct yourself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in these proceedings, which at this point in the proceedings are all I am doing is reading through the final jury instructions. I do not want that process interrupted by statements by you that are frankly misstatements of the law. The lie. If they're misstatements of the law, Your Honor. How come they haven't been proven for the record? And I'm asking, have all I right, acted in dishonor? He refuses to answer the questions. Have I, acted in dishonor, I have given Your him Honor? an ample opportunity to do so. He has forfeited his right to be present for the reading of the jury instructions, and he is to be removed to the neighboring courtroom. Oh. And will be in recess until that takes place. Your Honor, have, Thank I, you. have I acted in dishonor? <laughs> yeah, there's a bird on. I think he says that too about the bird on the flag. Um, I have 141 viewers and 79 likes. Can I please get my likes up? Hitting the like button is free. I'm not asking you to give me money, just hit the like button, please. And thank you. All right, so let us have another intermission while I get to the next part. Well, no, it's, not, it's too or too late for that. Hold on, let me get to the next part here. Let me see. I'm trying to see if he talks during this. To do was address subject matter jurisdiction. Um, that is, from my perspective, um, simply a tactic on his part to delay these proceedings, to disrupt these proceedings. <laughs> Um, I've written a written, hey, I've issued a written decision. He has yet to appeal that written decision. <clears throat> he has that right to file an interlocutory appeal. I would also note at no time during this case has jurisdiction ever been challenged uh, when he was represented by an attorney. Um, <laughs> so I warned him, um, oh. given the importance of the proceedings and the need for the court to advise this jury without interruption, he was removed once again. I will not bring him back into this courtroom unless he is willing and pledges to conform his conduct. John, we're all Brooksaholics. That's why we're still here. A year later, we're still Brooksaholics. And pledge to not hey, Linda. interrupt by making any statements when this jury is present and during the court reading all of the jury instructions. I will unmute him so that he can indicate what he would like to say to the court. You are unmuted, sir. Go ahead. Can I, can y'all hear me? We can. Sadly. First of all, at 925, I would uh, like the record to reflect that the prosecution was making uh, dispiritive remarks and uh, gestures in pursuant to what just happened. I don't appreciate it. And I think that that is very disrespectful. Oh. 
for the record. For the record. And again, I'm trying to figure out how Hold did on. I act in dishonor to be removed from the courtroom? You how have I acted in dishonor? This is a bitch. whole nother. Bitch. How have I acted in dishonor? Ah. Right, I'm going to mute Mr. Brooks. I'm not going to answer that question. I've made my ruling as far as anything that was done by the prosecution. I was not in the courtroom. Um, the jury was not present. Whatever happened, if anything at all, uh, was done outside the presence of the jury. Um, if there they was he, 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 and he, 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 and hold on, I want to hear that again. I was with he, 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 and he, 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 and the court, you are unmuted, sir. Go okay. ahead. Can I, can y'all hear me? We can. <laughs> First of all, at 925, I would uh, like the record to reflect that the prosecution was making uh, dispiritive remarks and uh, dispiritive. gestures in pursuance to what just happened. I don't appreciate it, and I think that that is very disrespectful for the record. Mm. And again, I'm trying to figure out how did I act in dishonor to be removed from the courtroom? How have I acted in dishonor? This is a whole nother. How have I acted in dishonor? You know, I find it interesting that he's talking about, you know, being in dishonor and, and all of this other stuff. Yet you can pull a gun out on your nephew and shoot at him. You can pull a gun out on your mother. You can uh, run over your baby mama and try to try to kill her steal her ebt card try to coerce her into not going through with prosecuting you for trying to kill her and then try and kill her again but you're worried about honor and dishonor and about a freaking bird and friends on a flag all right i'm going to mute mr brooks i'm not going to answer that question i've made hey, my B. ruling as far as anything that was done by the prosecution i was not in the courtroom um, the jury was not present. Whatever happened, if anything at all, uh, was done outside the presence of the jury. Um, if there is anything the state wants to put on the record right now, I'll give you that opportunity. Otherwise, um, I am going to bring the jury out, Mr. Brooks. Um, if you want to come back into this courtroom, you need to write your request down on a piece of paper. And when you do that, pledge to this court that you will not interrupt these proceedings. Without that, um, I will not... Uh, bring you back into this courtroom. Bye, bitch! Um, anything the state wants to put on the record? I have a question, Your Honor. I don't have anything directly in response to Mr. Brooks' last statement. All right, go ahead. Yesterday afternoon when we had the four screen up, there was a wider view of the courtroom so that the jury box could be seen. Is that possible to do? Again? Yes, it is. We can take the witness stand camera and pull it out so that he has a view of the jury box as well. I can't angle it, but I can yeah. um, do that. And he and for the record, when you do that, then he can see the jury box. So I would ask that that be done before. Right. We... My, uh, please do that, Madam Clerk. I bet you Zach is like, I'm so glad that his stank ass is gone. Oh, I'm so glad that we got rid of some of this funk for you know, for however long he acts up. I'm, I'm sure that's probably why you notice that she used to sit here and then she moved over here. I think that it was too powerful for her and she couldn't take it. See, Basie was insulated because she she's sick and so her nose has been um has been stuffy and 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 congested this whole time. So she'd been insulated from the funk. That you know, he probably been in uh military or something and he he got some some toughness about him so he could be like you know i'll i'm the man you know i'll take one for the team i'll sit here i i can deal with it and uh she probably couldn't do it she was like i can't you somebody gonna have to sit here Well, the, it's not on Zoom, and so the Core TV would be able to 
fix the camera on me and not on the screen uh, so that they don't capture any of the jurors and they're directed to honor that and do that. Gunner, if you've ever noticed, he he tries to mirror the attorneys and he tries to say and do things that he thinks that an attorney would say and or do. So he's playing lawyer. And that's what we find so interesting is that he is so abysmally terrible at it, but he thinks that he's doing a good job, but he is just as competent as the people who've been to school um, that's sitting on the other side of this room. Same, same thing, obviously, with our still photographer. Um, if there are any images captured of Mr. Brooks, um, as you can see the cameras being zoomed out, um, you would need to avoid capturing uh, members of the jury. Thank you, Your Honor. And the record should reflect you have zoomed out the camera and it looks right. like about 90% of the jury box can now be seen in the view if Mr. Brooks chooses to right. do that. Mr. Brooks, I'll unmute. What is it you would like the court to address? <laughs> how can uh, how can um, you, you rule that I don't have the, the right to be present in this the courtroom just making up shit right. i've answered that previously i've made my findings under illinois versus allen um he continues to interrupt even if it is by asking questions um i've made my ruling the record stands it speaks for itself um and i intend to have the jury brought out i need one moment um before i do that uh, and so I'm going to just take about a two minute recess. I think, again, this is why when I watch it, I have to watch it through Mushmouth Joe because all of these freaking breaks is just killing me dead. So while we're breaking, let me um, do another Lions video. Oh, there you are. Oh, Munchkin came back down here. He's sitting at my feet. I think he came back because he liked, um, maybe he liked Linus. All right, hold on. Let me get this. Uh-oh. Hold on, let me get it together here. All right. Now, this one, this made my husband laugh. This 32-year-old guy wants to spend a Sunday afternoon chilling with a 13-year-old girl after texting her about getting stoned. You say, I want to make love to you. <laughs> have you ever seen people have sex? Man, I ain't trying to hear all that because at the end of the day, I did what you asked me to do. She asked for it. She didn't ask for it. You sent it to her. And even if she did, I mean, that's you're not supposed to be sending stuff like that to somebody who says they're 13. But instead of taking responsibility, he tries to blame it all on the decoy. Did, did you know she said she was 18 when I met her? Did you know that? I've got the transcript right here. No, I'm not going to sit here and let somebody be inaccurate on the record and lie on the record. As he gets up to leave and makes the long <laughs> walk to the door, officers are in position ready to arrest him. Sheriff's office, hands up, hands up. He's then taken to jail. And later, he starts crying. <laughs> Y'all, this faith on this, um, on my thing, I got that from Reddit. And uh, I saw this picture and I was like, this was him in, um, in high school. I think he was a, a freshman in high school, that picture. As unattractive as it is. All righty, so let's get back to the stupidity. Let's see here. <laughs> all righty. Now we got to skip all the reading of the jury instructions. Hold on, where are we at? Okay. Um, he has not reclaimed his right to be present, and well, I never. Yes. 
All right, we are back on the record. Appearances are as they were before at 945. Mr. Brooks sent a note that says under Illinois v. Allen, I request for the second to be present at my trial. I never consented to not being present, nor did I act in dishonor because he has not made a pledge to conform his conduct as is required under Illinois v. Allen. He has not reclaimed his right to be present, and we will continue with him in the other room. Oh. Today, and I didn't do this previously, although he's forfeited his right to be present, given the technology, the audio and visual equipment that we have, the fact that we've also backed out the one camera so he can see the jurors. I'll make a finding, even without that, though, that it's the functional equivalent of being present in this courtroom. All right. With that, then the jury will be brought out. I'll remind Mr. Brooks while he. Numfundo, I'm telling you, like, we have never seen a trial like this, right? And we'll never see one like this again. And every trial just pales in comparison to this. And we watch it and we continue to see things we've never seen before. Or we just notice, and it's just, it's like a, it, it, it is a case study. We're also laughing at his complete idiocy. And this is also a warning for anybody who attempts to want to represent themselves. Like this is going to happen to you, especially if you are one ugly, two a narcissist, three arrogant, four uneducated, and five um, just a shitty human being, this is what will happen to you. And the world will rejoice in your demise. Can reclaim the right to come back into the courtroom and make a request. I am going to be adamant uh, that his Remember he said adamant. Uh, include a statement that he's willing to conduct himself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the concept of courts and judicial proceedings and specifically uh, pledge to not interrupt the reading of the jury instructions until such time he will remain in that courtroom. All right, go ahead. He's scared for the uh, the jury to uh, get control of this case. He's scared of that. Oh, now he can't hear. Look at him now. Now, now he can't hear. December fourteenth is his, his case with Erica. Oh, oh no, uh, uh, I can't hear. I don't even know, I mean, man, this ain't right, man. This, this ain't right. This ain't right. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be present and they violate my constitutional rights. They violate my constitutional rights. I'm supposed to be present. You keep holding me in contempt. Okay, okay, okay. All right. All right for the jury. Oh, I bet you he's faking reading the Bible. I can't tell. Contrary to sections 941. Okay, she reading, so we're not going to do that. We're not doing that. She reads for a long time. Um, the record should reflect that Mr. Brooks remains in the other courtroom, despite what I thought was he made clear he wanted to be here. Um, he's My understanding is he um, is now saying he doesn't understand what this court wants. 
I've made it very clear, I believe, what this court's expectation is that um, I continue with the jury instructions without interruption, that Mr. Brooks follow um, the rules of courtesy and decorum. Um, he's had those for quite some time and that he conduct himself uh, consistently with the dignity and decorum that these proceedings deserve. And that includes not interrupting um, or- Oh, you got the fake Bible. Legal matters that this court has previously ruled on. Um, we have lost a significant amount of time now addressing, or not even addressing, but Mr. Brooks really interrupting the flow and the proceedings uh, based upon his responses. And then he attempts to engage with this court on the meaning, for example, of Illinois versus Allen. Um, he needs to make a very clear statement to this court, not an ambiguous one, but a very clear one that he wants to come back into this courtroom and that he's uh, willing to conduct himself appropriately. And until he does that, um, he will continue to forfeit his right to be present. You know, in you can hear her as I instruct the jury. So with that, um, I did give him five minutes. I said, you have five minutes to decide. I set a timer. It went off. He is still in the other courtroom. We are going to continue. So the jury is to be brought out. And Madam Clerk confirmed that the audio and video is working just fine. Oh, that's right. The thank you for correcting me, Gunner. Thank you. It's the book. Thank you. I should further indicate he continues to be muted uh -huh. so as there are not interruptions. And he, he wants to address something hand. with the court. He needs to put it, uh, write it on his pad of paper. Look. The, the world is telling you that it's time to let it go. When you have this George Jefferson thing happening right here, it's time to just go ahead and just shave the shit off. Let it go. Let it go. It's over. You got this happening right here. A little lily pad on the top of his head. It's time to let it go. It's coming back. And I will address it at the appropriate time. Oh. Who, who don't need to talk too much and, and what's annoying? I need you to um, explain what you mean by that before I block you out of here. Because I don't want to misunderstand what you're saying. Well, hello. You you have a motor mouth. Oh, okay, that's fine. Well, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Well, you can motor your ass on out of here because this is my channel, and I can say whatever the fuck I want. Okay. If you don't like it, there is a X at the top right of your screen. You can hit that. And you don't have to hear my mouth ever, okay? Let's continue. Bye, bitch. I just want to put on the record that at 11.01, I took the break. It's now 11.48. So it's, I intended to take 10, 15 minutes tops and... Mr. Brooks, you can write it down. I'm not going to interrupt further. The jury's coming out. All right. <laughs> oh, he mad. Him's mad. Thank you, John. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I, I appreciate that. Continuing on then with the jury instructions. 
if you are satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt that all three elements of first degree recklessly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eggs. Thank you, Carol. Somebody understand. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. No, they will complain about me, Mini T. Me. You come to my channel, tell me I talk too much on a commentary channel. I talk too much. I tell you, boy. Okay, let's get on. Cause she reading. Let's see. Tell me my black ass talk too much. Mm -mm. All right, thank you. Be seated. As soon as the doors close, I just need to put a couple things on the record. Um, as I read the doors closed, right? There we go. As I read through the bail jumping, it dawned on me that the battery should not be referenced because the battery was not on Main Street. And so I took it out um, because the way that the charge and the information <laughs> reads, and we had that discussion preliminarily, which is why later on it doesn't reference the instruction for battery. So I cleaned that up by rereading it and taking that out. So I wanted to make a record of that. Um, obviously, I will need to have uh, a new set made that has that uh, correction. Um, and I apologize for not catching that previously, um, but obviously I caught that as I read it. Um, there was one other heading that said preliminary on, I think it was instruction 70. I need to cross that out. Um, a or a, depending on how you say it, missing from one thing, I'm gonna add that in and I'll, and I'll have that for the parties. And then, uh, I did note that at approximately 12.19, um, it may have been a little bit earlier than that, but I noticed Mr. Brooks was waving his hands. At one point, I did indicate I would address that at a later point in time. Um, I'm aware, I am aware of a number of filings. Um, I addressed two of them previously, but there are two additional um, I am going to have copies made of all of these filings for the state uh, so that they have an opportunity to review them. Um, from my perspective, just briefly, um, he's making some objections to what I am doing, but at no time in those did he ask uh, to be brought back to the courtroom. And certainly within those, he did not pledge to follow the um, basic tenets of courtesy and decorum. Um, given where I was at in the proceedings with the reading of the preliminary instructions and given the court's prior uh, finding that he had forfeited his right to be present, um, I thought it important to get through the reading of the instructions up until the point of the closing argument instruction. Oh, thank which I you, Carol. Uh, review that with the jury when they come back prior to the parties being given their opportunity to give closing arguments. Um, I will also be advising Mr. Brooks that given that um, I'm moving on to a second part of this, that being the closing arguments, he uh, will be uh, invited back into the courtroom here. Okay, it's about to be time. Closing arguments, of course, subject to um, his conduct. Um, I expect that he will follow the rules of courtesy and decorum um, and also not raise legal issues in front of the jury um, when they are here. With that, um, we will take our lunch recess. Um, it's 1247. I will take an hour and 15 minutes. Thank you, everyone. <sighs> okay. Let's move on here. Okay, this is fool back in courtroom. All right, let's go. Hey, Darren. Hey, Monica. Welcome, welcome. Oh, I know. Jess's mom. I mean, I feel so hurt for her, especially. 
I mean, it was all, you know, messed up, but I mean, eight years old. And this is the holidays. Christmas is coming up. Look at, look at, look at this food. You can close that for you bursting flames, freak. And you know what kills me? He's got all these papers here, all these papers, but he don't write nothing down. He hasn't written his closing statement while he was sitting over there in the courtroom, listening to all of those charges. He could have been writing a closing statement right then and there. He has sense enough to do that. Hey, Ashley Lynn. I got a bunch of pretty girls over here. Monica pretty, Ashley pretty. Steve Dodd is pretty. All the people I can see. Uh, they think is the avatars. Now y'all might, they don't have pictures in your avatar. Y'all might be pretty too, but I can't see it. So <laughs> every day he be shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. Yes. Welcome to all the international subscribers. We love you here in America. America, America. We in America. <laughs> Come on, bro. Look at him. See, look, he looking all in the computer screen, seeing what's going on behind him. Seeing all the people he 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 and it key key king at his expense. I wish I could have been there. Oh, if you want to talk about some cults? That's interesting. If y'all have Netflix, it's a show called Escaping the Twin Flames. That is freaking an awesome cult special it's about a limited episode i think about four episodes and it is a uh like a self-help cult where um you're supposed to be there to find and manifest your twin flame it's got a bunch of new age then judeo-christianity and some of the um stuff from scientology all that weird old shit just balled into one big ball of crazy. So that is escaping the twin flames. Y'all will love it. Come on, bruh. Come on, this mess tape. I guess judge coming. He don't stand up, so I can't tell what's happening. He just respectful as hell. Here we go. Hello, this shit don't take the start talking. He forever. Look at him. Oh, he he having um some breathing problems. He's smelling his breath again. Yep, he got fix. He got to expel some of that stank ass air out of his his diaper. I don't know what he's doing. Um, imagining the penis that's going to be like coming in his face. Not really sure what he's looking at. I think that he's imagining that nice big um, eggplant that's coming his way. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh God, I'm just so ready for my eggplant sandwich. I'm ready for my eggplant sandwich. Yes, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Oh, we ready. Yeah, you know, screw you, bitch. I'm not standing up for you, white bitch. I ain't standing up for you. That's from yesterday, too. We got to scan that in, too. Okay. Do you have the sheets for me? 
You got the serial killer gaze going. Yes. His yellow sheet. Yes. Come on, pimpins. Yes, Joanne. He's going to be in protective custody for a minute. Because, you know, he's not in his official prison home yet. But he's going to be in protective custody for a while. All right. It's 2 o'clock. I'll call the case. State of Wisconsin versus Daryl Brooks. Case number 21 CF 1848. May have the appearances, please. Good afternoon, Judge. Lockwood, Leslie Jason, and Zach Wichow for the state. Look, look how Arthur leaning over. She's smelling. Look at her. She's smelling. <clears throat> I'm here without, without prejudice by special appearance. Uh, beneficiary, I'm here under fraud, menace, duress, and instruction. <laughs> beneficiary, Jennifer R. Girl. Hey, Tracy. This is a social security sesta Q trust action, which you are a real party and interest to. As Sue Jers and Propia, Propia Persona, this is a military admiralty tribunal and maritime law and the title for the united states code section one which you can see ah. which states placing a fringe on a national flag is within discretion of <laughs> presidential president acting as commander-in-chief of the army and navy is this uh, a common law court or an admiralty court I need to rewind all of that again. The records reflect that the individual known to this court okay. as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is wearing a dress shirt. Um, I know he has Brooks' his... persona. Secure. Uh, and Zach Wachow will pray for the state. <clears throat> I'm here without, without prejudice by special appearance. Uh, beneficiary, I'm here under fraud, menace, duress, and extortion. Judiciary, Jennifer R. Girl. This is a social security sesta Q trust action, which you are a real party and in interest to. As hey, J. Jones. Jurors and Propia, Propia Persona. Lord Jesus. This is a military admiralty tribunal and maritime law. And the title for the United States Code Section 1, which you can see. Oh. Which states placing a fringe on a national flag is within discretion of presidential president acting as commander in chief of the army and navy. Is this uh, a common law court or an admiralty court? Mm, mm, mm. The records reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is wearing a dress shirt. Um, I know he has a suit coat, but it's not. On. You said rewind the back. Wearing a mask. The court is this tribunal. A real party and in his duress. <clears throat> I'm here without without prejudice by special appearance. Mm -hmm. uh, beneficiary, I'm here under fraud, menace, duress, and extortion. Judiciary, Jennifer R. Girl. This is a social security sesta Q trust action, which you are a real party and in interest to. Mm. Sue Jers and Propia, Propia Persona. Ah. This is a military admiralty tribunal and maritime law. Mm -hmm. and the title for the United States Code Section 1, which you can see. Mm -hmm. Which states placing a fringe on a national flag is within discretion of presidential president acting as commander in chief of the army and navy. Is this uh, a common law court or an admiralty court? Mm. The records reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is wearing a dress shirt. Um, I know he has a suit coat, but it's not on. He's also wearing a mask. The court is not going to address any of the issues that he is raising as they are meritless. Um, and uh, the, I would also say the same as to the uh, notes that he passed while he was in the other courtroom. <laughs> For the record, I did provide a copy of all of those to the state as well. You can get that online, Gunner. You can get all of this online. There is a sovereign citizen. There are websites. There are communities of these people online. Online. Assess the Q Trust. 
what a sense of cute trust uh, let me find what it is in the sovereign citizen uh world give me just a second let me see what these idiots say okay let's see here just so I can find it. So um, it is the legal term for an individual who is the beneficiary of a trust or an insurance policy with rights to property and the income and profits that the property provides. A sister Q trust is the person entitled to an equitable rather than legal trust in the estate assets so as you can see if we're talking about equity and if we're talking about insurance and civil matters and property matters has nothing to do with criminal law it's sovereign citizen nonsense pure and simple they are also uploaded into the file and are made part of the record to the extent that he raises objections or lack of consent it is noted for the record for the record I didn't say it. i don't consent to being called that name or identity that is the trust name and it is not me myself i don't <laughs> recognize that name nor do i consent to being called by that name mm. with all respect around. And we still have yet to address subject matter jurisdiction, which has yet to be proven on the record. On the record. Um, Gunner, no, he's not a realtor because he has no career, remember? Yeah, exactly. That's what that idiot don't consent to the commentary. May I receive those original copies time stamped? Shut up. All right, I need to uh, make a record of one part of a jury instruction that I do need to advise the jury. It will also be corrected in the packet. Um, now we don't claim him. In the last period, year, the jury instruction on credibility of witnesses was modified by the jury instruction committee. And it was just an oversight on the court's part to not include. It's really just one paragraph. It was. Oh, Minnie T, I saw that. I think he was in Judge Simpson's court, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it's a different one, but uh, he was like he had a billion dollars to pay his <laughs> his rent. And to do that when they come out. And then again, uh, the full instruction will be amended so that it's in the packet that goes to the jury. Um, and Madam Clerk, if you haven't already, if you could print off page... 72 it's the um it adds a paragraph before the last paragraph that starts with there is no magic way for you to evaluate the testimony um, and again i wanted to be consistent with the most recent version of the jury instructions and consistent with what was instructed or provided to the jurors uh, at the beginning of the case and so i will make sure that they have that and so advise them when they come out um, also I will read instruction 160, closing arguments. Um, Madam Clerk, if you could just make the change so that it's of parties. Um, <laughs> we, we missed that uh, correction as well. So it's the closing arguments of the parties, not the attorneys. This is day 14, uh, Jay Jones. And so I will just make that correction and make sure it's... This is the I day... Value and return for value this document. This is the day after the box for it. When he's giving his closing argument, Your Honor, I requested that I have uh, copies of my filings from earlier, time stamped. Uh, Mr. Brooks, I'll provide you with uh, the copies later on. I need to continue with the instructing of the jury and have the parties make their closing arguments. Your Honor, with all I respect, did... the state received copies. How come I can't receive the copies of my filings? You know what? We'll give, I can give you the print-offs, but I can't give you the originals right now. I, that's what I'm referring to, and you will absolutely get those back. Um, I, I guess I was mistaken that you wrote copy on it. I thought you retained a copy for your records. So with that, 
Madam Clerk will print off from the record. It won't be the yellow copies just yet. I'll take that up later outside the- He did that on day um, eight or nine, I think. Or maybe it was 10. It's between those days. I think he was still wearing the um, the, the black suit is when he, I think he did that. The civil is a suit. The presence of the jury after the case has been given to them. Now, in terms of the closing arguments, um, I did set a time limit for the parties yesterday. Each side will have a total of one hour. Um, Mr. Brooks, so that you are fully aware, the party with the burden of proof, which is the state of Wisconsin. But think about this. He did all this filing. He files multiple filings every day. He does multiple ICS every day. And he wants all this stuff time stamped and certified and notarized. Yeah, I'm sure they are charging him and they won't they want their money. And so do don't have any money, remember? I mean, the Test Acute Trust has got a billion dollars in it. So the Test Acute Trust should have been able to pay some of that. So since the Test Acute Trust wasn't paying it, that's when he decided he's gonna flip out and be like, this is a civil matter, civil is a suit. We discussed the civil matter. And, oh, who's trying to do that? The civil matter. Scott that Sims goes first. And then you, as the opposing party, will have an opportunity to respond and argue. And then, time limit willing. Good night, Carol. Thank you for coming by and catch the rest of the replay. To present rebuttal uh, because they have the burden of proof. Mm -hmm. That's right, and Jay. And that is provided with the. Um, excerpt from the bench book that was provided to you yesterday it has uh, the purpose of the closing arguments is to summarize the facts, marshal arguments, focus the issues for the jury. I just talked about the order of the arguments. Um, the scope of the arguments are the content, duration, and form of argument are within the court's discretion. That's why I set a time limit of one hour for the parties. Oh, thank you, Minnie T. And give me money. Mr. Brooks, I will advise you that I certainly will wait and see uh, how you present your argument today. I will certainly wait to see if there are any um, objections raised, but I also want you to be aware that if I feel the arguments are improper, I may simply without an objection say, please move on as a clear Look indication from this court that um, what you are stating is not proper um, under the various rules and case law that govern um, closing arguments. It's amazing. He doesn't understand. That's what he's always complaining about. I don't understand what the proceedings and what's going on. She is telling you and even giving you books and, excuse me, and papers to help you. And she's explaining it to you and you're looking all off in the space, clearly not listening. But you don't understand and you need understanding and she's explaining it to you and you won't listen again your honor without prejudice i'm here by special appearance i don't consent to being called that name for the record whatever it's noted sir all right then with that i will have the jerk oh go ahead. uh looks like attorney upper has some issues she wants to raise yes i just have one question your honor would i have permission to put the easel up and display some of the poster boards I did confer with uh, Captain Dussault as far as security is concerned, and he agreed to it if the court would give me that uh, authority. Where would it be displayed? He's going to put it like right here, and then you want me standing at this table during. I do. Table. Yes. So I would just position it like right here. Um, and I don't have to leave it up through the whole thing. I realize it blocks. Nice share. Of, uh, of people in the courtroom. Detective Casey would be willing to assist me in, in removing them when I'm done with them. Mm -hmm. That's okay with you. I trust it won't block Mr. Brooks' view of the jury. And that's as long as. Yes, that, I was going to put it like right Wait. So Jamie Foxx, too? Reap, Jamie Foxx? What the hell going on? You could still see me and the jury. With that caveat, yes, I will allow that. All right. Objection. What is that? What is supposed to be put up? Shut up. They were uh, previously uh, admitted, Your Honor. It's Exhibit 15, and 
So are they exhibits? I'm, I'm confused to what they are. Mr. Brooks, I made a ruling. Uh, the state made a request. I granted it. Yeah, but I'm, in terms I'm saying of, I don't understand what, what's being shown. Should not have the right to ask, uh, to object and ask what it is that's actually going to be shown. Bitch, they just said it's the map. And they, you, and they look and they walk by with the map. Look, it's a freaking parade map. I'm terms saying, of, I don't understand what what's. It, they were uh, previously uh, admitted, Your Honor. It's Exhibit 15 and 130. So are they exhibits? I'm I'm confused. Just the exhibits. Are. Mr. Brooks, I made a ruling. Uh, the state has made a ruling. Look, there's the maps. That's what it is. That that that's exactly what it is. It's right it's passing right by you. Look, 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 look. Yeah, but I'm. In terms I'm saying, of, I don't right understand what what's being shown should not have the right to ask uh to object and ask what it is that's actually going to be shown the states put on the record what it is it's a it is they or should say they are exhibits that have previously been received by the court during the course of this trial that is proper for a party to do that during its closing argument so can i put up exhibits <laughs> um, Oh, Mr. wow. Rich, I don't know what you have planned for your closing argument. Uh, so I'm, I'm making a request, the same request. May I be able to put up? Uh, well, exhibits? I guess it depends on what it is, sir. So I'm not going to take up any more time because what I intend to do is um, once the state goes through its closing, I may take just a short comfort break, depending on how long it is. Um, and if there's something in particular, what are you, you will need to tell me what it is. As long as it's an exhibit from this case, then I don't, I wouldn't have an issue with it. it. They would be from this case, obviously. Obviously. It's just not nothing that the state had. Oh. I'm not aware of exhibits that the state wouldn't have, that you would have. Everything that's been received, we have a list. Um, so if it's not something that was received during this trial. Hey, Mr. Karen Wood. As an exhibit by the court, unless you tell me what it is so that I can make a ruling. Thank you, um, Cindy. I can't see how it would be relevant or appropriate for your closing argument. They're uh, part of my filings. That you <laughs> the filings have no relevance to the issues that are before the jury. The closing At the arguments hill are to direct the jury so that they have your arguments so that when they go back to determine the issues in this case, which are related to whether you're guilty or not guilty of the 76 charges, um, things like subject matter jurisdiction on a record, or, uh, like that would not be something that would be proper before this jury. Those are legal issues that the court would decide. The jury is the judge of the facts. Uh -huh. The court is the judge of the law. That's I'm why not, I have all of these jury instructions to give to uh -huh. the jury. I'm not referring to subject matter jurisdiction. No way. What are you referring to then? Be very specific so I can make a finding in rule. I was specific. Uh, my other filings. That That's was not filed. specific enough, my, sir. What are you referring my court, to? Dr. Which Sheen, filing? My, let me know when you're done, Your Honor. Which filing, sir? Not generally, but specifically. Are you done? Ciao. Hey, China. Are you done? Sir, that's very rude and disrespectful. No, just, I didn't know if you was going to say something. I that's why I'm asking, are you done? Which? What time Your Honor, how come every to? time I try, even when I try to err on the side of caution, you, you find some <laughs> way to make it to be something that it's not? Okay. So for people who don't know, when you have a conversation with someone and you pause to let them speak, that means I'm done. I'm letting you take the floor. So you're speaking. So for you to sit there and stare at me with this diaper on and your forehead all uh, lined up with a lily pad in phone full display. Um, that's disrespectful. And we don't call this a lily pad. You, you know how the, the earth um, is Pangea was Pangea um, back in the day. And you know, when the end of the, the world happens and before the sun expands to swallow up the solar system, 
the earth is going to have a, a massive event that's going to happen to it and it's going to turn into Pangea Proxima. So we're going to have another Pangea. If you go and look at it, it looks like the top of his head, the, the new supercontinent. It looks like the top of Brooke's head. I didn't know if you was going to say something else. I've asked a question, sir. So Shut the when fuck I, said, up. I would hope it would convey to you. I'm looking for an answer. So which filing are you referring to? All my filings, all my filings, my my uh my notice of appearance, my statement of particulars, my bond, the court docket sheet. So he thinks that this this type of crap, this <laughs> this bunch of nonsense is going to prove, it's going to uh counteract. The fact that he's in the vehicle, he's in the vehicle on camera with the windows down, your court docket sheet and the statement of particulars and the judge's oath of office is going to somehow overcome that evidence. Right. All of those filings. Right, right. Display those to the jury is denied. It's not relevant. How is it not relevant? Not even your That's my the determination, office? sir. So I'll take, I am going. And to... guess what, uh, ESP ghost girl? Darrell still going to be in jail. Even when that happens, he'll still be here. To start this. Not even your oath of office can be shown? No, that is not relevant to these proceedings. Yes, it's vehicle. It it's not relevant in front of the jury. Why is okay. it not relevant? Can you? Mr. Brooks. Can you explain you why that's not relevant? You are not going to be able to raise those types of issues and present a closing argument based upon my oath of office, whether I'm licensed to practice law in the state of Wisconsin. I said your uh, oath of office. I didn't say anything. <laughs> whether you consent to this appearance or not, none of those things help the jury determine the issues in this case, which are related to whether you are guilty or not guilty of the 76 charges that have the been jury, the jury filed should in know this that case. they should know the truth in their duties in their rights. Uh oh, know that at least Mr. Brooks, I'm putting you on notice that if you continue with this um, insistence upon presenting information that's not properly before the jury as evidence in this case, that I will instruct you during your closing argument to move on and potentially ask the jury have the jury leave so that I can admonish you. And if you keep insisting on that, sir, that will be a in direct violation of the court's direction. So they you. can't even, they can't even know that I got a shock device on my ankle. Oh, there we they go. Absolutely do not need to know that. Why so it's not? not relevant to the determinations of guilt or innocence. In this it's case. the truth. Mr. Brooks, your custodial status is not on trial here. Uh, I no, would argue that it is. conduct from November 21st of 2021 is- <laughs> That hasn't been trial. proven. For the record. You may not bring up your, the way that you've been shackled. It's not relevant, sir. It's and if you truth. do so, you do it at your peril, but it's- uh, There, there is the no peril. Is it's my right no, though. Let me, let me go. Okay. It's she said, right. let me rock, bitch. Let me rock. Just like under the First things, Amendment, sir. which yeah. I preserved the, my First Amendment right when I came in this morning, I also preserved my right. Sixth Brooks, Amendment right. Please stop. You do not have an unfettered First Amendment right. That is very clear based upon. What do you mean by unfettered? Law. What do you mean by unfettered? It I don't. Means it is not absolute. It can be restricted. So the Constitution of the United States can be constricted. Right. <laughs> Mr. Brooks, I'm putting you on notice that if you continue with your insistence on raising issues that I'm going to raise issues that the jury needs to are, know. They're oh, not regardless issues. because they're 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 under the rights of the United States Constitution, Mr. which Brooks, is the I law of the land. Oh, instruction for six. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to let the jury point. know the truth. Mm. Their their duty and their rights mm. under the First Amendment and under the Sixth Amendment. Uh huh. I have the right to inform them of their rights, of the truth, and of their duties. Oh, under the First Amendment and under the Sixth Amendment, under the Sixth Amendment of the Constitution of these United States, these America. You can't. No state law can override that. Mr. Any Bruce, law, you any to law, repugnant. When the jury comes out, Your because Honor. I need. To no, I do not. State. That's why I'm addressing this before they're not before they come out. That's why I'm trying to address this before they come out. So it doesn't become an issue once they're in here. But under the First Amendment, 
and under the Sixth Amendment of the Constitution, which are rights that I preserve, the moment we stepped in here this morning when this proceedings started, I All preserved right, those rights sir. for the record. And now you're telling me mm. that those rights are not, would you say, unfettered or fit? I don't know what you say. I don't even know what that means. I don't, I don't even understand that. Idiot. But any law repugnant of the United States Constitution is null and void. Ah. Mr. Brooks, I'm putting you on notice that you can also uh, forfeit by your conduct the right to present a closing. We all are Bob Kitten. In appropriate circumstances, um, the right to present a closing argument, no different than the right to testify, may be subject to forfeiture where your conduct is incompatible with the assertion of the right at issue. The goals that this court has attempted to follow throughout this proceeding are multifaceted and multifold. Uh, number one, I do have an obligation and I have done my best to ensure that this is a fair trial. However, a fair trial does not mean a defendant has unfettered rights to state whatever he wants, when he wants. Uh, this court, not only through the course of the trial, uh, is deemed with the responsibility to control the presentation of evidence to as to ensure fairness and reliability of the criminal trial process. Um, it also includes uh, ensuring that the closing arguments <laughs> are relevant, are appropriate. Um, this court must also uh, be concerned with efficiency and effectiveness. And of course, last but not least, courtesy and decorum in this courtroom, what I would generally refer to as civility in the courtroom. Oh, John Bubba, I'm so mad at you. <laughs> the truth, the truth, the truth is on fire. Truth on the fire, like when I pee, all these dudes run trains on. Oh my God, I got ice. I got ice in my parts and got no heart. It smells like Kentucky when I fart. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. I am outdone. Y'all are hell in this chat. <laughs> um, you do not have unfettered First Amendment rights or an unfettered Sixth Amendment right, sir. <gasps> Um, you must conform your conduct to the rules of decorum, the rules of evidence, and the rules of procedure. While well, you have a right to present relevant and pro- Look, she was just holding on at this point. She was like, I just got to get this dish over to the jury. I just, I just got to just play along just a little bit longer. I'm tired. I'm sick of this shit. And I'm going to get, I'm fixing it. I'm, I'm turning it over. I, I just- this court is a court of common law, admiralty. All of those things relate to your claim as being a sovereign, which are frankly baseless. They're meritless. They've been debunked by many courts, including the court uh, in the Benneby decision that's been referenced by this court previously. That's a good point, Sherry. I will give you a fair <laughs> opportunity to present a closing argument, but again, it is not unfettered. The simple fact is, sir, this court can restrict That's true. your right to present a closing argument. This court has the authority under 90611, under the various cases, uh, including Illinois versus... And remember, she was running for Wisconsin Supreme Court. So I know that she's being thorough and y'all said she talks too much and, and we know that she's playing the long game, but she's also, this is going to be her political campaign ad as well. I looked it up earlier and I'll just pull it up and tell you the case site so that we so that you have it. <laughs> I would direct your attention to Harry versus New York found at 422 US 853 in 1975 case, although in a footnote. Um, it Harry, does stand Harry for the proposition that a defendant who has oh, the he right got to conduct his own Defense has, of course, the same right to make a closing argument. That's quoting State uh, Ferretta versus California. Or following she the did lose the campaign from uh, Rock and Anthony and Chambers, uh, a right, even a constitutional right that a defendant has, uh, may be forfeited by conduct. This court 
uh, just like it attempted to do with regard to your right to testify and set up reasonable restrictions so as to uh, meet all of the goals that the court needs to meet. See, she was trying to say that I faced evil head on and I and I met evil with grace and dignity and a steady, I'm a steady hand. This is this is part of her campaign. Evidence that was not presented and not received in this courtroom is not relevant to your closing arguments. Um, Have you ever noticed that politicians are lawyers and pastors? Arguments must be based on the law. You ever noticed that? As you interpret the law, but as the law is, you must base your closing arguments on the facts forehead. that have been established during this case, meaning the evidence, the testimony. Um, as I indicated earlier, the, the purpose of a closing argument is to summarize the facts, marshal arguments, and focus <laughs> the issues for the jury. Uh, it is fair that you comment on evidence, including arguing evidence to the conclusion or inference. Girl, you're wasting all your voice, all your words. He is not listening to a word that you have to say. You are not guilty of these offenses. Um, you may not convey any idea that you have undisclosed information. Neither party may vouch. She might be. I mean, it depends. Um, I think that her positions was a bit extreme, even for Wisconsin. It, is, it would be improper to ask a jury to draw inferences <clears throat> that the parties know are not true. And your comments on evidence is limited to evidence in the case. You may not comment on facts outside the record or peculiarly within your own knowledge. I mean, if they want to be in prison for a, some a, of a millennium, sure. For determining the proprietary of arguments that I am guided by from my judicial bench book and all of the cases that are referenced therein. I agree, Jay Jones. So thank you, Gunner. Sir, that even without an objection, this court may, in an effort to preserve the dignity, the decorum, and to keep the issues properly before the jury, may advise you during your closing argument to move on. If you do not honor the court's rulings, then you will run the risk of forfeiting your right to be present and potentially forfeiting your right to further present your closing argument. With that, I am bringing this jury out to complete the instructions that I need to add to the credibility uh, instruction, the paragraph on implicit bias and to let them know the full instructions that they received will have it, to read 160 closing arguments of the parties, and then to have the state go first as they bear the burden of proof. Now, you know, I'll just let you make your record. I didn't over talk you, I didn't interrupt you. Oh, congratulations. I'll let you, I'll let you make the record. Mm. With all due respect, when, when, when will I be able to make the record? As I've tried to do numerous times by saying I off I wanted to present an offer of proof for my appeal. That's the chance for me to be able to make the record. Uh, I'm denying your request to make an offer <laughs> of proof regarding your appeal. It's sir, not, I'm, I'm not, not allowed required to make the to record at all, Your Honor. Sir. I'm not allowed sir. to make the record at all. At all? As I just let you did, because some, some of the sir, issues I have been, some of the issues has been. You have told me what you want to do. I told Honor. you you can't. I've addressed your the Honor, request. Some of the issues have been me over talking you and interrupting you. I did not do that. Like you're doing now. Even though everything that you said, you have not proven for the record and it's, it's unlawful law. You haven't shown one time that that's, that is lawful for you to do what you've been doing Mr. as far Price, as your rulings. Once again, I'm not going to debate with you the prior rulings of this court. There's absolutely no need at this point for you to make Runner. an offer of proof regarding my prior. Jay Jones, you, you would think that he forgot where he was. He really forgot that he's in shock shocks. He forgot. Oh, you know, I, I let you talk. I, I let you, you go ahead and finish. Is she leaving? She can leave from here. See, her name is here. It's not on a, on a badge. With a number, you know, inmate nine six eleven. No, no, she she works here. She's got keys to move about 
and, and, and do whatever the hell she wants to do. You are shackled, shot shackled to the table, but you let her do what she, bye, boy, bye. Rulings or decisions that you disagree with. Your Kill Honor, yourself. I have an to inform, if I'm going to inform to the jury. Hold me in contempt. I have, I have constitutional rights that are being trampled on and you're coming up with ways to make a lawful law where like it doesn't say in Illinois versus Allen anywhere about utilizing the records reflect way. that the jury bailiff is in here. However, the jury is still in the hallway. Yeah. I'm going to give Mr. Brooks one more opportunity to be respectful of the court's rulings, whether Your he Honor, agrees with them I or not. I have dishonored the court. <laughs> I'm, I'm merely exercising my rights under the Constitution, under the First Amendment, and under the Sixth Amendment. Mr. Brooks, your rights do not include you disrupting these proceedings I'm not, the way I'm that not you have through the, the course proceeding. of You just told weeks. me you don't have to honor my constitutional rights in so many words. You're using a mute Mr. button Brooks, that's not the even the jury in your is decision. outside this door. They're not brought in. I'm yet. informed that I'm the jury, asking, I'm in Look, all the folks in the back are saying, okay, I'm just waiting for when they tell us we got to clear the courtroom again, make sure y'all have your purse and all your things neat and ready to go because we're going to get up in a minute. To get up it again, you that the jury to is be outside respectful the door. of their time, they're not in the courtroom, I'm they're not present. You to be respectful of the court's ruling, they're not present. You These are issues not. that need to be resolved before they're present, Mr. Brooks. They will not be resolved to your satisfaction. It's not about my satisfaction, it's about the constitution, made. it's about what's right. Are you going to are you going to answer questions as a public framework. servant on why you're making up laws that are not in, in the uh? Uh, Illinois versus Allen and never utilized right, the, the mute button. They never said anything jury. about a mute button. Lord, he's stupid. It is clear Why that Mr. Brooks has muted? absolutely no intention of because you won't shut your dick suckers and courtesy. He has repeatedly talked over me. He's repeatedly interrupted. Even though I've made rulings, he's not respectful of the fact that I made a ruling, even though he disagrees with it. How can you I attempted it? to bring the jury out How can you and utilize he mute continued to talk. That's that's so, Mr. Brooks. You Honor, have forfeited your right to be that, present for the state's is that closing not, argument. Your Honor, you will can be you answer taken this to question? the courtroom next As door, and I will servant, invite you back over when it's time for your you can't, closing. You can't arguments. invite me back over. I can reclaim my right. So, how can you invite me right, to do anything? It's her courtroom. So, since it's her courtroom, she can invite your dusty ass back over. Hey, are you talking about the courtroom is to be cleared so that Mr. Brooks can be removed to the next courtroom and I'll make appropriate See? findings findings when he's in the other courtroom yeah. when I can and you'll do mute so me, without, which you can't lawfully do um interruption you can't lawfully mute me so now you now you're trampling over my first they was ready I'm like yep we we knew it let's go ahead and get our stuff together all right let's do another intermission <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Oh, let me see what I'm gonna do. Hold on. Let me find it here. Oh, okay. Here's the one. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Mr. Brooks, do you have any position on that? I am unmuting you. I would note he takes the headphones on and off throughout. He doesn't have them on. <laughs> He's looking at a book. I wish you would stop saying a book. I'm looking at the Bible. Thank you. Not just a book. It's the book. Can't disagree with you there, sir. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I mean, people actually live by it, though. Anyway. Sir, I'm contemplating putting an hour time limit on closing arguments. <laughs> I ain't doing no closing arguments tomorrow. Um, the closing arguments will most likely be tomorrow. Given, I'm not doing it tomorrow. Then you'll forfeit your right to give one, sir, because as you we have. You can't, you can't force me. You can't force me. <laughs> what, type, what type of court is this where you can say you're going to force somebody not to be able to give a closing argument? How is that law so Sir, law? if you. Choose not how's to give one. Uh, 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 how's that lawful <laughs> Oh, Lord of mercy. Ah, ah, ah.
<laughs> okay. All right, y'all. Here we go. Ah, ah, ah. All right. Back to hell. Oh, somebody been timed out. I can't see. Look, they over there. They talking all that shit about me. They got me out of here. I can't even see what's going on. I can't even see what's going on on the other side of the courtroom. How is that fair? How is that fair? And I can't see what's going on on the other side of the courtroom. This is unlawful. They is trampling over my rights. Y'all see this shit? Y'all see this shit? They trampling over all of my rights. I have a First Amendment right to say what I want to say. And you're going to put me in, in here in this room and I can't even see what's going on. I deserve to be in the courtroom. It's not fair. It's not fair and it's not right. And God is going to get all of you bitches. Uh, Lord, I know I stink right now. I really need a bath. I know I need a bath. I'm just going to stand here and you know, I'm taking a stand. I'm in here by myself. I'm fighting against all these white folks. And look at them. Look at them. They're just waiting for me. Look at them. Look at them. But they know that I don't consent to being called that name. It ain't me. See, look, 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 look at them. Look what all they doing over there. Look at them. Ooh. Look at them. They're, they're over there. He, 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 and he, 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 he on me. They just talking shit about me. I just, you know, I just stand here and take it. Look, can somebody come over here and get this, please? Can somebody, can somebody tell the judge I want to be back in the courtroom? Is anybody listening to me? Is anybody listening to me? Somebody come over here and, and help me. I got, I got a paper to file. I got my, I said, how come I got my ICFs? I'm gonna get them time stamped and delivered to myself. I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand. This is not right. It's not fair. How they doing me? Y'all see what she doing? Y'all see what she doing? It's not right. It's not fair. Come on, man. Y'all know this ain't right. Y'all know this ain't right. It's all that bitch Erica's fault anyway. It's all her fault. She should have been drinking. And if she hadn't been drinking, then I wouldn't have been here in the first place. It's all her fault. But you know what? I'm not going to let this jury come in this room. Fuck that. That jury is not coming in here. I'm going to delay as much as I can. Because I, I already know it's the inevitable. I'm okay with it. I'm all right. I'm all right with it. But I am going to let these people know they can nullify. Even though I have pissed them off days ago, I'm going to let them know that they can nullify. I'm going to tell them about the roaches in their cereal bowl. And I cut my baby's umbilical cords. I need a quiet in the courtroom, please. We are back on the record. Um, the appearances are as they were before, except that Mr. Brooks has been uh, removed to the other courtroom. Um, the court did that because we came out on the record at 2 o'clock following the <coughs> lunch break. Uh, Mr. Brooks was brought to the main courtroom. They got shuffled on papers. Um, and during that almost 35 minutes or so, he was insistent <laughs> on you, raising a variety of legal issues with which this yeah. court has either previously addressed or which... He's saying they, now they know this shit. This 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 shirt too big. They know this shit too big. That's that I got to stand up here because it keep it from looking wrinkled. So I got to stand up here because you know this shit too big. Procedural mechanism, meaning an offer of proof at this time. We are not in the midst of a trial where the courts made an evidentiary ruling that would require the preservation of the record by making an offer of proof. Um, this court uh, has been attempting, frankly, all day 
to get through the reading of jury instructions, to get to the point where the parties make their closing arguments, and ultimately to put this case in the jury's hands. It has been challenging. It has been met uh, by resistance from Mr. Brooks. Um, I would once again describe it as being. Y'all, come on. I got 248 people watching and 100 and how many likes I got? 151. Can I get my likes up, please? Can we get my likes up close to two? If it's all possible, please. And thank you. Y'all making me big all the time. Y'all quit making me big. Stubbornly defiant, although at times he may wait for me to uh, make my ruling. He, he continues to not respect the fact that a ruling has been made and he wants to argue and re-argue and re-argue points that this court has already gone over. Thank and you, in an effort to simply put him on notice regarding his behavior, given the history of this case, uh, the court was attempting to set some parameters regarding closing arguments so <laughs> that you, they Patricia. are focused so that they are proper um, and that they follow the law. That was met with a considerable amount of resistance and repeated statements by Mr. Brooks that he has um, First Amendment rights, Sixth Amendment rights, 14th Amendment rights. He has all of those rights. That is not in dispute, but those rights do not come in a vacuum when we are in a court uh, proceeding and a trial such as this. Um, the rules of evidence, the rules of procedure, the rules of courtesy and decorum all apply. Oops. And this case has demonstrated that a stubbornly defiant defendant can forfeit even important constitutional rights by conduct. Uh, that includes the right to be present. It included the right to present further witnesses and testimony and it included the right of the defendant to testify <laughs> on his own behalf. I hope that I do not have to go through um, a decision that forfeits his right or that makes a finding that he's forfeited his right to make a closing argument. I will certainly uh, wait and see how that goes. I would note he was very respectful when he did his opening statement. Um, it was clear. He made a variety of points. Um, he did so in a way that I would say was very um, conscientious of people's time. It was cogent. It was concise. It was probably about 35 minutes. I may be off a little bit, but that's what my memory is. It wasn't overly lengthy. Um, I would hope that he follows some of those same things <laughs> here when he does his closing argument, but he has been removed from this courtroom because of his stubborn defiance and disrespect of this court of courtesy and decorum. Um, and what I truly believe is an effort on his part to continue to delay and lengthen these proceedings. Um, I've said it before, I'll state it again, um, it is essential to the proper administration of criminal justice that dignity, order, and decorum be the hallmarks of all court proceedings in our country. The flagrant disregard in the courtroom of elementary standards of proper conduct. Oh, should Lord not Jesus, I don't care. The appropriate that available value calling the case that the audience is um, other than the bailiffs, but I'm talking about as a party to the litigation. So the courtroom the cameras in my courtroom include one that would normally be on the witness adjusted the and technology that um, i do have him on mute for the time being because i needed to make a record and there is a very for him and so order and decorum <laughs> uh, that when appropriate he be muted i will admit he's like this is some bullshit this is oh this is over I'm just hanging my head in defeat. <laughs> as soon as he is willing to. Oh, my gosh. So up. with that, um, I will advise him that once the jury is brought out, I will unmute him. I expect that he will be 
respectful Girl, of them, bye. and I expect that he will not interrupt as Girl, the court bye. goes through the uh, couple of final jury instructions I need to go through, uh, including the reading of Thank you, Lady T. Uh, jury instruction 160, closing arguments of the parties. Boy, and then I will turn it over to the state, but I will unmute him at that point. Hurry so up. should he have an objection, he will be able to state objection. I will be able to rule on it. And again, I expect him to honor whatever the ruling that is made. Girl, and if please. he does not do that, then I will utilize the mute function. Um, if he doesn't have it, we'll make sure he has the objection sign. And if I see that, I will unmute him to hear what it is and then make a ruling accordingly. Attorney Hopper. I don't know if you want to do it now or at a later time, but I think we should make a record as I will be displaying a PowerPoint during my closing argument, throughout my closing argument, and I'm not sure how that is projected in the next room or how it affects what we see in this room, Your Honor, but we should make a record of that at some point. Thank you. My understanding is Madam Clerk has the ability, uh, so that is displayed not only here, but in. Look, I'll be over there th thinking about dinner plans. So I'm like, we almost got this. We almost got this done. The jury's going to get this. This shit is going to be over. We need to go. We gotta, we're going out and we're going to have some wine tonight. We're going to have some wine tonight and celebrate. Accordingly. Okay. Thank you. If you would like before the, the jury comes out, we could do a test. Yes. Could we please? Please. No. Um, it's a, a channel called Linus Wallace. They make the cards. I have confirmed. I have no artistic over there that uh, the PowerPoint point is also viewable. All right. And it should be the similarly to what we see. So the monitors will uh, display uh, the camera that Mr. Brooks is appearing that is on Mr. Brooks on the left hand side of the TV. And then the four cameras for this courtroom are on the right hand side, but it's probably a maybe a quarter to a third of the screen and then the remainder of the screen is the powerpoint the monitors in the courtroom that mr brooks is in are no different than what they are here he would have one at the table but he would also there would also be the very very large tv monitor above the clerk over there well it's smaller and then the very large one over the witness stand so it would be very oh my god i don't care um, so that's Linus Wallace's, uh, channel, um, Shannon, and he's the one that did those cartoons. My God, that water that she has is some of that Jesus water. That, um, I would further make a record that there are headphones on the table. <sighs> I don't care about the headphones on the table. The bitch can hear. He can hear. Hear everything that you're saying. All right. Then are you turning off the all right, PowerPoint? Let us know when you need that function. And then Madam Clerk will be able to um, make that viewable in both courtrooms. Very good. Thank you. All right. With that, the jury is to be brought out. <clears throat> Okay. All right, so Offer's gonna give in her clothes. Oh, look at him. He like, God dog it. I tried, I tried, and they just wanna keep a brother down. They wanna keep a black man down. Now they're gonna have all these white folks. They're gonna put me in jail. They're gonna put me under the jail. So what can I do? What can I do? What, what can I say? And they know this suit too big. They know this shirt me. Thank you, everyone. Big. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, when I read the jury instruction to uh -oh. you previously regarding credibility, 
I had a prior version of the jury instruction. Now, what I read to you at, in the very beginning, at Bet the you very see beginning me. of this case was the most recent. I am going to Bitch, you see me. You see me waving my hands. Hold. Let me know what I mean, bitch. The packet that will be sent with the jurors to the jury deliberation room, it will have the complete instruction. And it's instruction number 30, uh, 300, excuse me. And this is what I want. Blah, 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 blah. I'd upon your verb. Argument? Go ahead. Up on the chopper. <laughs> oh, I know Nancy. I know. Hold on one second. Mr. Brooks, do you have and look and that's why I have the ability to hit the fast forward button. Some of this shit is boring. Have an objection? Nothing's I thought I was supposed to I thought I was supposed to be unmuting. You are now. All right. Uh attorney offer, you may start. Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon, everybody. Kind of nice to stand here in the middle of the courtroom, you know, all week or the last three weeks. They shoved me at the end of the table because I'm the lefty in the group. It's nice to be able to look at you all and say thank you. Truly thank you. Go ahead, Appa. Each and every one of you, I want to express our sincere gratitude from the prosecution team, myself, Deputy District Attorney Leslie Basie, Assistant District Attorney Zach Woodchow. Oh, There's no one in this courtroom that does not realize the sacrifice that you've made serving your community in this very important task. You put your lives on hold. I don't even want to hear from your bosses. Thank you. You've watched these proceedings and you've noticed as we sit at our prosecution table, we don't have a client at our table. But rest assured, we do represent someone. We represent the people of the state of Wisconsin. It's an entity. I can't bring it to the courtroom. People enact laws. People want to feel safe. People have representatives in Madison or Washington, DC that set standards, rules, that we all are expected to live by. And when those rules are violated, prosecutors step in and enforce the law. Daryl Brooks does not represent anybody. He does not have a client. Daryl Brooks is the client. Daryl Brooks is the defendant. The state of Wisconsin is the plaintiff. It's really that simple and it's consistent with any other criminal case you've ever heard about at any other time in any other jurisdiction. It runs the same, no matter what state, state or federal. Look, I believe Opera was tired at this point. She probably does clean up a little bit better, but I think she was just like, look, I don't care. I just, I'm, I'm just making it into court. And I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of it. Fuck it. I'm coming in. I'm going to ask you for your guilty vote at the end of my comments. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you to do anything. Except I'm going to say one thing to you that I wholeheartedly ask you to obey. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for the interruption. Your objection, sir? A mischaracterization of who I am and the way it was said. Uh, I feel like it, it was talking down. All right, your objections noted. It's overruled. The statement continue. And you know it's brilliant that they had the female give a close because y'all know he hate women. He hate Judge Doro. He hate Opera the Chopper. He hate all these women. You must not, not, not consider anything about Daryl Brooks other than his conduct in downtown Waukesha on the evening of November 21, 2020. Look at him. Nothing he's done before that. I don't consent to being called that name. Done since that. When you go back to that deliberation room, please obey Judge Doro. Confine your comments 
to his conduct on November 21 of 21? Is he guilty of the 76 counts that he's been charged with? That and solely that should be your topic of discussion. So what are the charges against Daryl Brooks? Thank you for your patience in listening to the jury instructions. They must be read for each and every count. But sadly, they can be summarized very quickly like this as far as the actual counts. Counts one through six are first degree intentional homicide while armed with a dangerous Make sure you ask question that like button. Counts seven through 67, first degree recklessly endangering safety while armed with a dangerous weapon. Counts 68 through 74, hit and run causing death. Counts 75 and 76, bail jumping, and count 77, battery. That's the only case the, the charge he cared about. Mr. Brooks, what is your objection? Um, I have 76 charges, not 77. It's a mischaracter mischaracterization of the charges. Uh, that is correct. It is uh, sustained. It should be count 68 through 73, I believe, and then 74 through 75 and then 76. Thank you, Your Honor. I like what difference does it make? It's, it's 76. You what, What's the difference with the 77? Oh, because 77 would have been that second battery that uh, allegedly didn't happen that Erica Patterson, she was not right when it came to the thing. I do apologize for my math skills. Hey, Brian. 68 through 73, 74 and 75 are bail jumping and 76 is battery. I apologize for that. Yes, he can hear everything. We're going to talk about counts one through 67 in detail. Oh, counts okay. 68 through 73, hit and run causing death, in my opinion, are easily summarized as this. He never stopped. Mm -hmm. Never. <laughs> bail jumping, he was out on bail for two files in Milwaukee County facing felony charges there. Mm. He was ordered to not commit any further crimes. Mm. If you believe he can, uh, was involved in any of the conduct charging counts one through 67, you and he would. guilty of bail jumping. Battery, that relates to the split lip and black eye suffered by Erica Peterson. Patterson, hooker. We told the story kind of backwards. We started with the battery for background. First degree intentional homicide. You've seen this in our opening statement. You've heard it from Judge Doro. Did Daryl Brooks cause the death of the victim, a victim? Did he have, I'm sorry, did he act with intent to kill, meaning either the mental purpose to take the life of another or was aware that his conduct was practically certain to cause the death of another human being. Count one, Ginny Sorensen. Count two, Lee Owen. Count three, Tamara Durand. Well, I got, I got. Count four, Jane Kulik. Count five, Bill Hospel. <clears throat> Count six, Sparks. Those are the individuals who lost their lives because of the conduct of Daryl Brooks. From there, we go to reckless endangering safety. What is that? In this case, it means that through his reckless driving, he endangered the safety of other people. And he did so demonstrating utter disregard for human life. Mm -hmm. Now, behind me is State's Exhibit 15. It's also on the PowerPoint. If you choose, you may have this chart with you in the deliberation room to help you walk through hey, Angela. each of these counts if you find it helpful. It's up to you. If you don't want it, you don't have to have it. But it will be available for you if you ask for it. 
and it'll take you as we did in our presentation of the case right down Main Street and address all the counts that were involved, all the counts that were charged. <laughs> to prove reckless endangering safety, and I'm just gonna go back one slide, nowhere do you see there that we have to prove any degree of injury to anyone. Never once the ju judge door instruct you that somebody has to be physically injured. Now, Detective Casey told you that was the standard we used in deciding of all these hundreds of thousands of people who is included in these charges. <clears throat> and a decision was made by the prosecution team to include people who were physically injured to be efficient in our prosecution. And so everybody up and down the street, I would argue, had their safety in danger that day. I didn't charge 5,000 counts. We selected 60, 61 counts of people that we can identify by name in Exhibit 15 that were injured by the conduct of Mr. Brooks. Those other people in green, people in red, are the fatalities. And we presented this case to you in much the same fashion that is presented here on exhibit 15 as to how the injuries occurred going down that street. So we are absolutely held to our burden of proof and the elements for each offense that Judge Doro instructed you on, but we are not required to prove any injury to anybody. The question is, was their safety endangered by his reckless conduct, his reckless driving? <clears throat> now, some of the groups, it's pretty easy. They walked in a formation and you can get a photograph or a diagram and you can kind of see pretty easily who was located where, right? And you can think back to the videos that you've seen for each of these groups and remember, and you'll see them again, the path of the vehicle as it went through each of these groups. This is South Band, of course. All of these names that are being displayed on the PowerPoint Exhibit 21 are on Exhibit 15 in green for Waukesha South Band. Pretty much the whole left half of the formation was endangered by the safety of Daryl Brooks driving up the side of that band. The extreme dance team, it's a little difficult to read, but again, this chart was marked as an exhibit. It's exhibit number 33. If you want it, you can have it in the jury room. The names on this chart will match the names for the extreme dance team on States Exhibit 15. All of the girls that were struck and injured as they marched with the extreme dance team, plus some people on the back that were handing out candy or serving in support roles as the uh, unit made its way down the street. The dancing grannies, States Exhibit 54, the formation that they marched in, who was located where, and your recollection of how that SUV zigzagged through that group. And you can just see the names and match it up to who was injured and killed versus who wasn't. Now, one of the big things in this case has always been, why did this happen? What was he thinking? Why did he do this? Again, those are things I don't necessarily have to prove to you. His intent, I do have to prove, and I submit without any doubt, there's overwhelming evidence that this was an intentional act by Daryl Brooks. Good night, Miss Ghost Girl. 
of utter disregard for human life. I say that for these reasons, folks. Number one, first and foremost, just stop driving. That's it. It's really that simple. Not one person had to be hurt that day if he would have just stopped driving. Um, you specifically, I'm sorry, can can I be heard? Your objection, sir? Uh, I didn't I didn't know if I was on mute or not. Um, You're not? You, you specifically said in your jury instructions that intent cannot be, you can't look into someone's mind, I think is what it says, to find intent. So how could that be characterized as someone knowing for sure intent or not knowing for sure intent? You're making an argument. You'll have an opportunity to do that later. Your objection's noted. It's overruled. The state may continue. I apologize. We, sh we showed you at the very beginning. Remember, our first witness was Sergeant Wanner, the man who was the incident commander for the parade. We put up another map. I think it states Exhibit 1. You can have that if you want it. it shows all the positions of all the police officers and the reserve officers the barricades, the squad cars. How do I know it was intentional? Because even Daryl Brooks told Detective Carpenter, I could tell something was going on downtown. No reasonable person would drive upon this area, see the squads with their red and blues on, see the officers in the street with their bright yellow vests, see all the people milling around, see the pl the floats lining up and the participants getting ready and not know to drive safely slowly and obey officers the barricades help us prove it was intentional the police presence help us prove it's intentional the parade participants help us prove it's intentional and the parade spectators help us prove it's intentional your objection, sir? Speculation as to what the alleged defendant said he saw. It, sir, it was never. Your objections noted it's overruled. This is closing arguments, not the evidentiary phase. And you're not the last defendant. Go ahead, so, I can, so how can speculation be made to what was saw? If your objections noted to. it's overruled. Continue, Attorney Opera. Honking the horn. Quite interesting. <laughs> Then Mr. Brooks asked so many witnesses if they heard the horn honking. Some of them said they did at the beginning of the parade. Yeah, I heard a horn honk. <coughs> Most of them said they didn't. The horn honking cuts both ways, folks. If he's honking his horn, that means he can see something's in front of him. Tell him. That means he knows there's an object in the road. Tell him. You can rely on your common experience in your affairs of everyday life. Mm. If you see something in the road and you want to alert the other person to your presence, you will honk. But you do not have the green light to then just keep going yep. if they don't move. Right. He knew they were there. Mm -hmm. Intent. Mm-hmm. Chopper, chopper. I one. I'm sorry. Going back to my street, number 15, I failed to include the uh, Catholic community. Chopper, That's chopper. just one of the photographs showing the people that will match up to exhibit 15 from the Catholic community of Waukesha. There's a lot of photographs identifying the people that were marching with that group. Uh. The Parade started, this is the starting point, or at least near the beginning, right? This is the area. We showed some videos of the groups passing by in this area. We heard testimony from four different police officers standing in four different spots near here, telling of their four different efforts to stop him intentional 
Sergeant Wanner's back here, testified that this red SUV blew by me. I waved both arms over my head. I'm in a police uniform. I have an unmarked squad, but I have my red and blues on. And he asked me. He gets down here to the corner where Detective Casey is standing. Detective Casey <clears throat> runs out into the street, gets close enough to put his hand on the hood of the car. He keeps going. He comes down, turns on the main street, gets in this area of East Avenue to the south and Buckley Street to the north. This is where he encounters Officer Schneider and <laughs> Officer Buttrin. They each make a separate effort to stop him, and he keeps going. Four police officers. Oh, Lord. It's intentional. He had plenty of opportunity to just stop. Anywhere along the way, one of the officers testified to it. I think it was Officer Schneider. This was an accident, and he mistakenly wandered onto the parade route after passing all this. Look, even if Erica had taken a, a whole liter of vodka, a whole liter of vodka, a whole pint of Hennessy, I mean, if she had drank a whole keg, don't have nothing to do with him driving into a parade. What Erica drinking a much hard beverage is going to do to make him drive his dumbass drive into the parade. Yes. And he mistakenly wandered onto the parade route at any point. All he had to do was stop. They could have paused the parade. They could have moved the barricades and escorted him out. Yep. He didn't. It was intentional. He went on for four blocks. Four blocks. It was intentional. He reached speeds of approximately 30 miles an hour. That's intentional. Yep. Uh, you got no, nothing to say, do you? 68 different people. Wow. 68. Wow. How can you hit one and keep going? How can you hit two and keep going? How can you hit three and keep going? Didn't phase him a bit. He kept going until he got to the end and there was no more bodies to hit. It's intentional. Mischaracterization of the evidence. Wow. His conduct when he left the parade yeah. route, we'll get into this. His flight, his hiding, his panic, his desperation to run. Mm -hmm. Get the hell out of town as fast as he could before the cops came. That shows yeah. his intent. His interview with Detective Carpenter, we spent several hours playing you snippets of that interview. How telling was that? Never once did he say any of these things. Never once did he say, like he told you in his opening statement, it wasn't an ac it was an accident. It wasn't intentional. Never said that to Detective Carpenter. No, he came up with some convoluted story about I got a ride out here from a buddy in a tan Kia, and then Magic I left to go meet Erica, and we got into a fight, and then I went back, and the other guy got into a fight, and he was leaving, so I took off on foot. <laughs> Absolutely nonsensical story. Does oh, yeah. not match up. That pissed no him off. In this case. Overruled. He never I didn't even state the objection. She knows it's stupid. Well, argument. She may continue. I'm going to play this slide, which is a snippet from State's Exhibit number 53. Go ahead and play with sound, please. <laughs> And what's so sad is you hear how they're all happy in this video. It's like they have no idea that this is coming to them. No idea. 
That was just a snippet that I selected because I thought it really captured the environment that so many witnesses tried to explain to you, right? It's a Christmas parade. People are there with their families, their little kids, their grandkids, their neighbors, their friends, strangers, standing next to strangers. That's what's going on on Main Street. While that's going on on Main Street, this is going on. Mm. Remember this? This is the gas station on the corner of Barstow and North Street. While the units are marching down Main Street, entertaining the crowd, Daryl Brooks is driving recklessly. He's enraged. And ugly. And he's arguing with Erica Patterson. Why is this important? This is important because before he even gets to the parade route, this is how he's driving. He drives the wrong way down North Street and then acts like it's everybody else's fault in the world. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Shut it's up. When he finally pulls into the gas station, he rolls down his window and yells at the driver who's properly stopped at the stoplight that it's somehow that guy's fault that Daryl Brooks is trying to drive the wrong way down North Street. And from there, the rage continues. We get to this point, States Exhibit number three. Please play. Look at this bitch here. The video is playing. You can see Look at this the bit. pushing match between Daryl Brooks, Corey Runkle, Erica Patterson, and Nick Kirby. I'm going to kill you. Watch bitches. this. He turns to get in the car, flips up his hood, and goes and gets in the passenger seat. I'm sorry, sorry driver's seat. How long are we going to mischaracterize that one? Sir, it's argument. I've heard nothing improper. Your objection's noted. It's overruled. You may continue, Attorney Opper. Thank you. Opper the chopper. No, they can nullify. That's it. Go. He drives off onto the parade route. From this moment, right here on Exhibit 15, you're watching it. He's enraged. And ugly. He's angry. And ugly. Flips up that hood and he zooms past Sergeant Warner, past Officer Casey, onto the parade route. Thank now, you, Maria. No doubt, for the first two blocks, he does not strike anyone. And as we've discussed, some even said he was driving at a reasonable speed initially. By the time he gets past welcome, welcome. Officer Buttron and Officer Schneider in this area here of uh, East Avenue, past East Avenue, and clearly once he gets past Barstow, that's where it starts, right? That's where it starts. Nicole White, our first victim, mm. walking with Remax and hot air balloon. Knocks her over, keeps going, runs up and over the backs of Waukesha South Band. Mm. Hits the green children spectating on the sidewalk, keeps going, runs over Kelly Grabo and her daughter Adelia walk, walking with Burris Logistics. That's Cindy Lou Keeps Lou. going, plows through the entire extreme dance team mm. just before the five points, keeps going, hits Deborah Ramirez and her son Isaac spectating on the south side of the street, keeps going, clears the five points area, hits Jane Kulik, mm. square on, causing her to go up on the hood of the car, mm. and then fall off and drives over her body. Mm. He doesn't stop. He keeps going. 
runs through the kids over by the steaming cup. We heard parents testify about little Brinley and Owen that were standing there outside the steaming cup. Hey, Brian. They were struck by the red SUV driven by Daryl Brooks. Keeps going. Plows through the grannies in that zigzag fashion, striking most of them, injuring them, killing them. Mm. Keeps going. Gets down here to the end and goes through the uh, Catholic community. The witness, uh, remember Holly Berg, she testified about that um, mobile gas station incident. She said she was standing down here in this area. She said, I saw 15 to 20 people fly in the air. They look like bowling pins. And when she saw the video, she's absolutely right. It's a terrible description when you think these are human beings, but that's exactly what it looked like. When does the intent exist? It doesn't have to be even for a second. I'm not telling you who set out that morning to cause this carnage, but when he became enraged back here, he didn't give a damn who or what was in his way. He intentionally went on. I'll show you. Motive. I don't know why he did this. Folks, I don't know why. Other than the rage. He's right. You cannot read minds. Neither can I. Good night, Minnie T. But the law doesn't require you to. The law Have a good holiday. Way to reach a conclusion as to what is somebody thinking. And it's right here. Decide it based on his acts, words, and statements. And from all of the facts and circumstances. I've already been through many of them. I want to show you what I mean. Look at this. Was there room for him to get out? This is way back at the beginning. This is Officer Buttrin's squad video. Way back at the beginning. That's Buckley Street here that you're looking at. Look at those barricades. Look at the sparse crowd. And there's Officer Schneider in her uh, yellow fluorescent vest on the left side of the picture, about to run into the street and stop him. Yeah, I could have stopped him and went right over here, get him off. Intent. I'm going to play this video for you because, folks, for me, this is where it becomes crystal clear. You watch this video, the first thing you're going to do, you direct your attention to the left side of the screen, is you're going to see him hit Kelly, I'm sorry, Nicole White. Knock her to the ground and keep going. Now, if that was the end of the story, you may sit here and say, Madam DA, I, I don't know how you conclude intent from that. Maybe it was an accident. Maybe he didn't mean to do it. But watch what happens in this video after he knocks Nicole White down and tell me this does not prove intent. Please play. watching the left side of your screen look that's the horn he kept asking do, do you hear the car horn could you hear the horn no i hear the horns of the instruments those are the only horns i heard y'all hear how that crowd changed That's intent, folks. No reasonable person is going to come across a group of teenagers playing band instruments, drive over them, and keep going. 
That's a still shot of the same thing. That's intent. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt your objection, sir. How can you tell the jury what they're supposed to think? It's a proper argument. Your objection is noted as overruled. I would argue that it's I would say that it's improper and I Mr. Brooks, I made my ruling. I'm oh. going to mute you if you don't follow the rules. I didn't know that he tried to move for a mistrial. Wow. Exhibit one. Mistrial. Exhibit one fifty two. Clearly, I guess intentional. What he needed, I, I guess. Clearly, intentional conduct. States Exhibit ninety three. Mm. We asked the court to take time have you go look at this car in person because it's remarkably amazing <clears throat> that this damage was caused by human beings that's intent this is an excerpt from states exhibit 154 maybe a little hard to see a lot of that lane in the front part of this uh photo our shoes. Remember what Dr. Didritsky said about the shoes and the feet, the scuff marks on the toes and the ankles. And look at his, uh, look at the way he's looking. He is unfazed by any of this. This is not bothering him still. Look at all the shoes laying in the street. This is the area at the end when he ran through the Catholic community. No emotion. All the shoes laying there because of the velocity, remember? The medical examiner talked about the velocity. It's not just the speed, it's the velocity. The power that these people were knocked right out of their shoes. That's intent. The flight, the hiding, changing his appearance. I'm ready to flip flops. He had to go through some effort, right? Crawled up in this uh, playhouse, ditched his sweatshirt and his sandal. The other sandal seems pretty reasonable. He dropped it when he was jumping over a fence. <laughs> Changed his appearance. Please play. Look at this bitch. Look at him. Excuse me. And it's still calm. Intent. What's he running from? What's he running from if he's just a lost guy with no ride back to Milwaukee? What's he running from as there's cops? Yeah. Sirens wailing in the background. Whoops. That was me. So state's exhibit number 130. Put that up here quickly. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm not going to go through this whole thing, folks. Suffice it to say, after Officer Scolton tried to stop the threat at that intersection at the top hey, Lisa. of Thompson Avenue. Happy Thanksgiving Eve. And he blew through the barricades there and drove south on West Avenue over to Prospect Court, cutting through the yards and ditching the vehicle on Maple. Heard all the testimony about the commotion on Maple. The eyewitness testimony from Officer Sailors, off-duty police officer who saw this, saw the defendant, Daryl Brooks. He identified him for you in this court. Get out and run from this car and how we tracked him through the neighborhood. And again, the desperation whether he had to ask or use veiled threats like, I won't hurt you, but I need your phone. He was absolutely desperate to get out of there until he took refuge in the home of Daniel Ryder. Now, remember the interesting thing, folks. None of these witnesses in this area knew anything about what happened at the parade. None of them. None of them were there. None of them were there. So they, some of them tried to help, some of them didn't. Daniel Ryder did, and it's 
actually probably a really good thing that he took him in because it stalled, right? It stalled him from keep running, kept him in one place until the cops could close in <laughs> and get there. Now, Mr. Brooks repeatedly asked witnesses who had just watched their loved ones get struck by this SUV if they happened to catch a license plate. A license plate. States Exhibit 150. There's the front license plate. Uh-oh. Definitely a little blurry, but definitely you can make it out. States Exhibit 151. There's the rear plate. States Exhibit 175. There's Daryl Brooks uh -oh. in his music video with the same car and the same license plate. <clears throat> There's the key to the Ford that was found in Daryl Brooks' pocket. There's no doubt Daryl Brooks is the person responsible for this. Because this man in this picture uh -oh. is the same as this man in this picture uh -oh. wearing this sweatshirt. And again, it's a little hard to see, but you can ask for these exhibits in the jury room if you want the photograph you can see this design on the front of the uh sweatshirt if you look close enough cheap ass sweatshirt. this is a sweatshirt from the play set that has daryl brooks dna on it uh oh according to the crime lab mm -hmm. that's him right there uh oh that's daryl brooks driving off into the parade uh oh that's daryl brooks driving in the parade that's daryl brooks driving in the parade uh oh that is also Daryl Brooks driving in the parade. And so is that. Mm. And he kept asking people about the tints on the window. Well, guess what, folks? You don't need to see the tints on the window when the windows are rolled down. And there's clearly one person in that vehicle in every one of these photos. Uh oh. And it's that man. And it's that man. Mm. And it's that man. Uh oh. Daryl Edward Brooks Jr., date of birth 221, 1982, on his identification card issued by the state of Wisconsin. In all caps. In all capital letters. Oh. Daryl Edward Brooks Jr., this was in his pocket when they arrested him. Look at the photographer. The photographer's like, damn, girl, you good. You good. So this entire shenanigans that he's presented to you through his questioning of witnesses about I'm not Daryl Brooks and that's my name and I don't know who that is and I don't uh, consent to being called that name. It's just nothing but a distraction. Thank you, Annie. It's Daryl Brooks. Welcome. It's the man who drove through the Waukesha Christmas Parade and killed people. People. Injured people. Mm. Endangered the safety of people. Lots of them. Sorry, is there an objection, sir? Uh, Your Honor, with all due respect, I, I would appreciate the uh, the quote unquote uh, language to t what you mean by shenanigans and this and that and the third. Boy. Sir, your objections noted it's overruled. The state may continue. Well, can, can she tone that back? Because if that was me, if I would have. Mr. Brooks, like your that. objection is noted. It's overruled. These are closing arguments. There's nothing improper. It's noted. It's overruled. She may continue. I just wanted to be fair. You'll have an opportunity Shut to up, ho! Please let her finish. So I can, I can rebut him? Re no. Go ahead, Attorney Opper. Thank you. Idiot! I'm going to conclude my comments with this, folks. I'm going to show you the video, a stitched together video of all the carnage caused by Daryl Brooks, and I apologize. It's together. It's together. This is important <laughs> that you know what he did. Oh. It's important that you think about the women, like Paul White and Kelly Grabo and her daughter and Jane Kulik, who were just there with friends and co-workers supporting a local business. The teenagers marching in the band representing wearing their school colors. Michelle smash that like button. It's important. The boys and girls with the Blazers baseball team. 
and their coaches doing nothing more than handing out baseball cards. The young girls in the extreme <laughs> dance team. Can you imagine how many hours they spent practicing that routine? <gasps> we drove right through them without a care in the world. The grannies dancing their way down the street. And he's Perfect still step. talking. Every one of them. Catholic community there, as Father Matt said, spreading the light of Christ in the weeks before Christmas. He snuffed it out. And didn't give a rat there. It's time for Daryl Brooks to stop running. It's time for him to stop lying. It's time for him to be held accountable for his actions. Daryl Brooks cowardly rammed his way through this parade. Yes, he did. Violently killing and injuring so many people. I'm going to stop talking and play this video. But please, I ask you to add up the evidence. Use the map. Be One, careful, Anton. 15. You can check off the names. We've covered them all. Walk down that street like we did with you. Return guilty ver verdicts on all counts. All babies. Mm -hmm. Please. Screen back up. No, I need one more. Uh, yes, please. Now, y'all listen close. Go ahead. Don't give a damn. Like a doll face. Listen closely to the background. a door face. So he does this as a way to deflect. You know, he, he pretends to read the Bible, but then when it's just too much, that's when he pretends to pray. And nobody over the age of, I don't know, eight prays like this.
Don't give a rat's ass about these people. Oh, it, it should be. How the hell did he think that the jury was going to nullify after seeing that? How? Did, in, in his brain, did he think that he was going to pull that shit off? Thank you. Before we continue with Mr. Brooks's closing arguments, I'm going to take a short break. Um, all rise for the jury, please. <laughs> all right. Yes, she did take a break on that one. No, she did. He thought that he was actually going to get someone, the jury, to be on his side, somebody, after what he did. Here, I trust you are ready with your closing argument, sir. I'm ready to address subject matter jurisdiction as well, too. Now, right, here we go. Request is denied. Just for the record, I was addressing it for both courtrooms here in courtroom number, I think it's 20. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to bring the jury out. Are you prepared to look dude behind him confused? He's like, what the hell is he talking about? What? Present your closing argument, sir. Look at his face. To address subject matter jurisdiction as well, too. That request is denied. Just for the record, I was addressing it for both courtrooms here in courtroom number, I think it's 20. Hey, like Mr. Brooks, I'm going to bring the jury out. Are you prepared to present your closing argument? I would like for you to prove subject matter jurisdiction on the record, Your Honor. I'm not addressing that any further than I've addressed already, sir. There's a written decision. Uh, John, there is no way that there'll be no Black Lives Matter uh, waived ride on this one. That that should even be even invoked here. They don't even relate. He was trying and pulling out every trick out of his ass that he could come up with. And whatever lies his mama and, and his girlfriend, her girl, boyfriend, whatever, I don't know what the hell she is, um, told them and Jay Prince, they gave him some false hope. But what about if in a protest this shit? This is the, definitely not the same as um, um, George Floyd. What about if you get upset about this at all? Really Nobody. That. In that written decision, did, did I receive, uh, well, actually, I didn't receive anything. Was there copies made? Mr. Mr. Brooks, I'm away. Ask you one more time. I Are you meant, John? With your closing argument, I'm going to have the jury brought out. There is no I'm other in, legal arguments I I'm need to address of, from you at this time. I'm informed of what you're saying. I was merely asking, was there copies made of your, you say a written decision? Sir, my record, my written decision has been filed into the record. That is done electronically. You were provided with a written copy previously. Are you asking for another copy of that, sir? Yeah, because I, I don't have it. Well, you don't have it because you ripped it up. But she gave it to you and you read it and you ripped it up. As a courtesy, I'll have my clerk print off a copy and provide that to you. Is it proven subject matter jurisdiction? Your objection to the lack of jurisdiction has been noted repeatedly on the record. It is a meritless argument. I've indicated that in my written decision as to why there is subject matter jurisdiction. And I will continue forward with the final stages of this trial, which I hope include your closing argument and then the final instructions to the jury. I will hope it, it, it proves subject matter jurisdiction on the record too. All right, I will instruct the jury to come out for the record. 
the written decision is once again being provided to I accept for value and return for value this document. Really? It is not based in lawful law. And it does not prove subject matter jurisdiction whatsoever. I hadn't heard that. Refers to some complaint that was filed in uh, the name of a trust, not my name. She's trying to hold it together. Were you aware of that, Your Honor? Say, so I'm trying to hold this shit together. It's been asked to be brought out. I mean, I requested that they be brought out. They're on their way. Were you aware Please of that? Please be prepared with your closing argument. Were you aware of that, Your Honor? Or is that a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer any questions as a public servant? He giving stalker tease. All right. So that is a tacit agreement. Record to reflect the jury is coming out. I have not heard NOI talking about this idiot at all. The only dumbass that I know that supported him is what's his name? Uh, Jay Prince. Yeah, now he learned. He learned Thank the you, last everyone. day. Please be seated. Go ahead, sir. You may begin your closing argument. I'm not ready to begin closing arguments. Here we go. So this is your opportunity to provide your closing argument to the jury. Please start. I have uh, started the timer I'm in, uh, of one hour. Yeah, I don't I'm think. I'm informed of that, Your Honor, but I'm not ready to proceed as I don't understand the... Uh, <laughs> reason why the questions asked before the jury was present were not answered. There, there are issues that needed to be addressed outside of the jury, as you always say, which I don't understand why the jury deserves. Mr. Brooks, this is your opportunity to present your closing argument to the jury. Please do so. I'm informed of that, but the jury needs to understand the truth, their rights and their duties as they have not been informed of their truth. He's a douche nozzle. Mr. Brooks, the court has begun the instruction process. I read 73 pages this morning and into the early afternoon. I have another 30 plus pages to read. Did you they will be informed of the law. Did you inform them that they Mr. can Brooks, notify the law? Mr. Brooks, you do not have that right to request that. And Were I'm advising informed? you one more time. This is your opportunity to provide your closing argument. Please begin. I intend to when ready. I just want to know if the jury was informed that they can nullify the law. <laughs> they Parks, are, you have they no have right the power. to make that argument to the jury. It's true. They have the power. Oh, all right. I'm going to excuse the jury. They should They should know that they have the power. By the power of grace. Please oh. rise for the jury. I have the power. <laughs> yep, he man. Yep, <laughs> the power of grace. Go. <laughs> Thank you. Please be seated. Oh man, Mr. Brooks, you do not have a right to request jury nullification directly from this jury. I direct your attention uh, to the Bajerkas case, B J E R K A S S. That's State versus 163 Wisconsin Second 549. While you are not incorrect that the jury has the power to nullify they don't have the right to do so and no party has the right to instruct or to request an instruction or to argue jury nullification you may talk in terms of fairness in general terms but you may not go further you may not argue that the jury should discard the instructions and in the law uh, and find you not guilty for that reason. You may not use the phrase jury nullification. You've done that now at least three times in earshot of the jury, uh, twice uh, while you were in the other courtroom. 
I was able to mute half of what you said the second time. And then of course uh, you was, raised that to me. once again, while in front of the jury just now. Um, you also indicated you weren't um, ready to give your closing argument. Sir, this is the time has come for you to give your closing argument. If you choose not to do so at this time, then you will forfeit your right to present the closing Jonathan. argument by your conduct. I haven't made any such choice. So you can't coerce me into Co-horse. a constitutional right uh, waiver when I have not waived the constitutional right. And I will not allow you as a public servant to do that. I have not made a choice. So this, the time has come for you to present your closing argument. Are you making a judicial determination that you're denying me a constitutional right in open court? I have not made such a record? determination as of yet, but you can forfeit your constitutional rights Under by what conduct. Under what law? Uh, Illinois versus Allen, state versus Anthony. Illinois versus Allen does not reference anything pertaining to uh, rights when talking about In closing state versus statements. Anthony, uh, Illinois the Supreme Court of Allen. Wisconsin referenced both that decision uh, when it essentially extended the reasoning or adopted the reasoning of Illinois versus Allen uh, to then find that a defendant could yeah. forfeit an important constitutional right by conduct. In State versus Anthony, it was not the right to be present in the courtroom, it was the right to testify. Okay, so no, none of those the reasoning, that you just named have anything to do with the closing arguments, Your Honor. You've, you've used Illinois versus Allen repeatedly to, when it comes to me being removed from the courtroom. Not one time did it bring up anything dealing with a closing statement or a closing <laughs> argument. So how's that same, uh, statute being used for something that it doesn't even refer to or pertain to. Mr. Brooks, the Allen decision, Illinois versus Allen, and the Anthony decision, which is State versus Anthony, are two examples of cases where a defendant lost a very important constitutional right because that right was forfeited by the conduct of that particular defendant. And that was to be present in trial, correct? The right to present a closing argument is no different. Because it is not evidence, um, it could be said that it doesn't even rank as high as the right to testify, which is guaranteed by the constitutions. Which I was denied the I'm right to I'm not prepared to, to make that to ruling to. here yet today, but I will tell you this, sir. The time has now come for you to present a closing argument. There will be no further delays. It's I not will delay. not be taking any further um, adjournments for you to prepare. You were advised yesterday that this court would proceed today with instructing the jury and with the parties making their closing arguments. And you made that while it violating up, my constitutional sir, right. Sir, please don't interrupt me because well, you've now you interrupted did. me a couple of times. No, once. So let's Twice. make that correct. Once. That's the third time. Okay, now you can say so, two. Mr. Brooks. I'm advising you yet again. The Thank time you, has now come. That's that that another name, interruption. Right. The time has now come for you to present your closing argument to this jury. And you were brought back over to this courtroom for that purpose. I'm going to let them. That's know. That's another interruption. No, I'm going to let them know that they have rights and they they should be told informed of hey the truth. Donna not are you telling give. me sir that it's you not are trying going to, to give dis let me ask you a no, question hello. I'm not trying to give any sir, jury you're instruction interrupting me and you haven't let me finish so are you telling me that you are going to disregard my very clear directive to you to not bring up the topic of jury nullification that's not what I said I'm asked that's why I'm asking you I don't understand that question because that's not what I said sir you oh. may not argue jury nullification I'm to I'm going this to jury. inform them of the truth. So you're going to inform them that they have the power of jury nullification. They do have the, you just said on the record that they have the power for, Sir, uh, I direct said that. Did again, you not just say me. that, Your Honor? <clears throat> Sir, you said jury, I could instruct them The jury has that. the power, but not the right to nullify. Right. You, you know, said the you, power. You said the listen power. Listen to me, sir. You're interrupting me once again. So I'm going to inform them that they have the power. The power. Are you telling me, sir, 
I'm not you telling you no such thing. I, I just told you what you just said. My directive to you call. to not raise the issue of jury nullification during your closing argument. That's not what I said. You just read and said that they have the power to. That's what you just said, Your Honor. Sir, State hey. versus DeJerkus said. Hey, I am J J nine E. I'm sorry, I just cannot pronounce your name. <laughs> and people have told me what it is, but I just cannot pronounce it. So I'm talking to you, J9 Eve, but I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. And it stands for the proposition that although the jury has the power of jury nullification, ah, they have no, the power. no power. party has the right to argue for jury nullification. I'm not arguing for it, Your Honor. In I just want them case, to be informed. The, I just up, want them sir, really to be informed. You can That's call it. call it informing, making them aware. Yeah, they, whether, should, they should be aware. You of are the not rights. allowed to make them aware of their power to nullify. That how is an improper them, argument. Your Honor, how can I not inform them that they have a power? How because can I that not, is not inform right them of a power that they have? Sir. Amen. I'm not giving a new jury instruction. That That's not what I'm arguing. There is no jury instruction for jury nullification, yeah, I'm not, sir, I'm because not, it's not allowed. I'm not attempting to give them a new jury instruction. I thank you, I'm Malika. really attempting to inform them of the power that they have. Mr. That's Mr. not against the law. I'm advising you one more time. You may not raise the issue of jury right, nullification well, thank you. I'm going before to this inform jury. them of the power that they have. I think we stop I'm not giving, them, telling me that I'm not you giving them a jury instruction. I'm telling them about jury nullification. That's, that's what I hear you saying. That's not what I said, though. Don't mischaracterize what I'm saying. Uh, you just read and said that they have the power. The power. They have the power to do that. So how how is informing it's an inherent them? inherent power that they have. They are not to be instructed on it. That I'm, is very clear in the law. In Your addition Honor. to, no, let me finish. Shut in addition up. to the case that I just cited, I'd cite to you uh, from the jury instructions, uh, the law note on jury nullification 705. Um, what that says, sirs, I'm not going to read it all. It's many, many pages. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is, it is improper for a court to allow a defendant or a defense attorney to make an argument or make the jury aware um, that they have the power to nullify a verdict. And Your Honor, you just added this last night. That's why I had to sit there for an hour in the holding cell and wait for you to change the whole paperwork because I brought that up. So you never intended for this to even be an issue. Mr. Brooks, it never was brought up. If you but think then I when I raised the issue, you Your Honor, think let me that finish. I'm not prepared to deal with an argue on jury nullification? I didn't say I, that's not what I said. I'm trying to leave it that's away. That's not what I said. In all fairness, that's not what I said. The record should accurately reflect that you were kept in and that Bob holding cell why was I kept so in there? that my clerk could finish adding a jury instruction that was not there. Six verdict forms, and it's times two because there's a guilty and a not guilty. Okay. For each no, let me finish. So how, did, so how did I have? Why did I have to sit here for that? Where I could have just went to my cell and had it delivered. Uber, call Uber. We had this Mr. at the Brooks. end of last at the end of last night before you call recess. I'm not going to debate that topic with you. We had a whole we had a further. whole conversation about Mr. Brooks. You me are bringing up about the jury nullification, disregarding this court. You re we you go can this. roll your eyes Here at we, me because all you want. It's ridiculous, Your Honor. Yeah. You 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 just stated that they have the power to nullify. Would you Any like, law, you would like, but then I, I said, read this to you, sir, the part of the case that's important, but you're not letting me get a word in edgewise. I'm trying my best not to remove you to the other courtroom, but that is oftentimes what I need to do in order for this court to make a full record without you interrupting me. But you need to be fully aware that you may not, may not hope raise the issue of jury nullification in front of this jury. It is not an allowable argument or an advisement or making them aware. However you want to describe that, sir, whatever verbiage you want to put in front of it, you may not do so. And this court has the power and the authority to limit. Yo, okay, uh, just pause real quick. So I just got a notification that um penthouse magazine 
model sues Axel Rose for the same thing with Diddy and Jamie Foxx. They coming out the woodwork with this. So now Axel Rose is being accused. Well, what you say to this jury, even in a closing argument. And if you're telling me through your conduct, through your words, that you are going to disregard that direction, you will forfeit your right to present a closing argument. Under what lawful law? Under State versus Anthony. That's that it doesn't refer to that. State versus it, Anthony it may doesn't. not have dealt with it hasn't dealt with closing the right arguments. to a closing argument, sir. It, but the reasoning you just said nonetheless it right there. is nope. fully applicable. No, because you can't, the more you can't general change the principle, law, Your Honor. You can't change the law. That's practicing law from the, the bench. Law, sir, right, the the general general I know you used to be in legislation. But you can't practice law from the bench. From the bench, Sir, I'm you not can't do that. Law from the bench. I you have... are if you're changing. If you're, ch Your Honor, you're making... attempting. You're attempting to make a a a, a uh -uh. separate case pertain to something here that it that, that doesn't even pertain to it. It has nothing to do with a closing argument. Nothing that you just so, named. Not Mr. Illinois Brooks, versus Allen. I would like to make a record. Would you please show the courtesy and respect? I will, Your Honor. That? I will. All right. So looking at the Anthony case. All right. And someone she is alleging the, the, the young lady with Axel Rose is alleging that back in 1989, that some inappropriate touching that rhymes with the word grape happened. And that case, starting at Head Note 7, paragraph 54, says the following, and you need to let me get all the way through it. We have recognized two distinct ways in which a defendant may give up his rights, waiver and forfeiture. State versus Pino is the first citation that they reference. Waiver is the intentional relinquishment or abandonment of a known right. Multiple citations there, I won't repeat them. Blah, 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 blah. Hold on. Often, such as when a Three, not four, feet at issue. They go on to discuss from Illinois a right you are going to agree. It is improper a closing argument. That is my ruling. I object to that ruling, Your Honor. I object to that ruling. Look at him. Are you willing to ask a back closing here. argument, sir, that does not reference jury nullification? I'm going to inform, inform the jury of their power. Again, I never stated that I was making a new jury instruction. I never sta in, uh, stated anything like that. And every case law that you just stated made no reference to closing arguments. It was all pertaining to uh, being present for the proceedings of trial and for testifying. So Not what one I'm time did you, you, hold on, I let, your Honor, with all due respect, I'll let you make your record. Oh, you let her, huh? Interrupt me. Mm. Go ahead. Not one case law that you just cited made any reference whatsoever to a closing argument. Not one. So how is me merely informing the jury of the power and the rights that they have? How is that a forfeiture of being able to give a closing argument. Oh boy. Well, in addition to the cases I've just cited, sir, I'd also point you to State versus Bajerkas, 163 Wisconsin 2nd at 549. Well, that's a lot of, that's that's a a lot of cases. That's a lot of from cases. 1991. Yeah. That is the first published appellate decision in Wisconsin to consider directly several issues relating to the jury nullification issue. In that particular case, the court very clearly said that the defense counsel in that case was allowed to talk in terms of fairness in general terms, but not to go further and could not argue that the jury quote should disregard the instructions and the law and find her not guilty because it seems fair. That's a description of jury nullification. To use the words jury nullification would run afoul even more. Girl, so I am telling you that given my inherent authority in controlling the mode and order of this court to ensure courtesy, decorum, 
and civility and to ensure that this jury is presented with arguments that are proper under the law. Mm. I am hereby telling you I am in, in creating a rule ah. for your closing argument that you may not raise the issue of jury nullification in any way. Your Honor, hold up. Hold, hold up. up now. Hold up. I'm the only one that has to be made rules for for closing arguments, but not the prosecution. How is that fair? How is that balanced? Mr. Brooks, I'm squarely faced with your defiance regarding the issue of jury nullification. It's that not is defiance. requiring it's me not defiance. to address this issue and to tell you very Your Honor, expressly that that is the rule I vehemently for your object closing to that. argument. Ve I am so impressed that he was able to pronounce vehemently. I'm so impressed. Vehemently object to that. Your objection is noted for the record. I mean, May I ask for a legal reconsideration of your ruling? <laughs> that request is denied. May I uh, respectfully ask for... Uh, Matter of fact, I reject that ruling and take exception to that ruling. Go ahead. Go down the list. You're for the record, may I request a legal or factual basis for your ruling? She just gave it to you. Not one I'm pertaining to being present in the courtroom or testifying. One that specifically talks about a closing argument. Hold up. Hold up. All of those requests are noted and will not reconsider. I've put my findings and my reasoning on the record, and I stand by that record. For the record, may I respectfully request a written judicial finding of facts and conclusion of law? Go down that list. Denied. For the record, may I respectfully move for interlocutory declaratory appeal on this matter? I'm not the forum for which it's not an appellate court hold. I cannot well, answer that. You, you referred to it before. You would need so to direct your appeal to I'm a, confused, your to Honor, a court of appeals, not this court. No, this is, I'm supposed to be in this admiralty court because you haven't, you haven't, is the, if, if we're under article three, article we three. Be in common law court, that wow. hasn't even been addressed. If we're in a common law court or an admiralty court. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. That's a baseless argument, sir. I don't and even need to what address law it. In fact, based on what law in fact? Reality. Based on what law in fact? Sir, I intend to bring this jury out and give you informed, an opportunity that. to present a closing argument. Yeah, if but you violate, also, please also, let me. Hey, sir, Joe, Joe. Just me made a rule. Again. You just tried to put me under a rule that no one else was put under. The circumstances require that I implement this rule, sir, given your the stubborn defiance no, on Your Honor, the issue that's of a prejudice to my defense. You can't place me under certain rules and not place the prosecution under the same rules. So the circumstances of this case and your insistence on arguing jury nullification <laughs> has resulted in I this court creating this rule. I haven't argued. <laughs> I said that I wanted to inform the jury of their power. I never once said, I'm going to make an argument. I'm going to give them a jury instruction. You may not advise them that. or make them aware in any way that they have the power. And why not? Of jury why nullification can't they be informed of their power? Because powers? it would violate the Bajurkis decision, sir. Violate what decision? Right, sir, I am going to bring the jury out. And I'm going to inform them that they have the power. And if you do that, I will dismiss the jury and I will declare that your right to present you a closing do that. argument Under what law has for been law? forfeited based upon I make oral, how I've outlined I make that today. Motion for a I'm legal not going to declare that at this point because I want to see what you will do. Uh, but if you raise the issue of jury nullification, I will That's immediately bad. dismiss the jury. You will forfeit your right you can't to do that. Uh, present a closing under argument. Under what lawful law can you? And then if you continue to interrupt under what me, lawful law, you will be removed to the other courtroom as I complete the So I'm being held in contempt again. Is it civil or criminal? Your Honor, uh, go ahead. I apologize. May I ask the court to consider perhaps an alternative? Offer, like I'm I sick of this shit. Yeah. The ruling the court has just made, and I understand the basis for it. You got to stop this. We all know the defendant in his petulance will say jury nullification in the first three seconds, the jury's in the room. Objection the, to that. To that. Proper I don't thing think to do, I think, Your Honor. Stop interrupting, attorney. I don't think Opera, I should be talked down to. 
allow him to make his closing arguments. I will object if he misstates the law. You can instruct the jury to disregard any misstatements of the law. And we continue in that fashion, if possible, for a reasonable amount of time. And if it becomes to the point where there's no reasonable, legal, <laughs> credible argument that's being made, then the court can decide as to whether or not he's forfeited his right to a closing argument. But we could at least try to, by merely objecting and the court telling the jury to disregard and instructing Mr. Brooks to move on to the next topic, we could try to allow him his opportunity <laughs> to provide a closing argument. If that's unworkable, then I think this record will be very clear as to the efforts of this court. And I think um, there, there is materials in the bench book, or I'm sorry, the jury instruction 705 um, that talk about a jury instruction this court could even give um, telling the jury that they are not at liberty to disregard the law, but we're not going that far yet because um, frankly, you have told them and you will tell them that closing arguments are not evidence. And um, I think they will abide by that. So I know it's going to require um, effort for the court to to allow this to um, <clears throat> allow Mr. Brooks to try and proceed. Thank you, Greg. But I think we should try that well, or welcome. something similar to that in an effort to get through this next step or else we will continue at this pace forever. I'm certainly willing to try that. It's about all we could come up with, Your Honor. I mean, I'm certainly willing to try it in this courtroom and the, if he disregards that to excuse the jury and then have him present from the, the other is, courtroom is over. would be the second step and then third would be a forfeiture. It's like, I don't want to hear this bitch's Your voice Honor, anymore. <clears throat> Your objection is noted for the record. That will be the course of action that this court takes. The first time you violate uh, the rule, you may be subject to forfeiting your right to be present where you will give the closing argument from the other courtroom. Um, and if you continue in a blatant disregard of the requirement that you not reference in any way jury nullification, I may make that final determination outside the presence of the jury. I object to that, Your Honor. All right, with that, let's bring the jury out. For the record, may I respectfully request the legal reconsideration no! of the agreement? So is that a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer my He said a third time, tacit. Good boy. Good boy. I decline to reconsider. I reject that ruling really and take exception to, to that, that ruling. ruling. Your Honor. Interlocutory declaratory appeal. For the record, may I request a legal or factual basis oh. for your ruling, Your Honor? Denied. For the record, may I respectfully request a written judicial finding of facts and conclusion of law on this issue, Your Honor? Denied. For the record, may I respectfully move for interlocutory declaratory, declaratory appeal, appeal on this matter? Hmm. I'm not the court to address that. For the record, may I move to stay these proceedings until this instant matter is adjudicated by a court of competent jurisdiction, which this court has no right. subject matter jurisdiction. Denied. Under, uh, based on what law or fact? Rise for the jury, please. Based on what law or fact? Because I'm going to inform the jury of their power. They deserve to know. Here he goes. <laughs> oh man, grilling ears. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. <coughs> Mr. Brooks, your closing argument, please. Hold on before we get started. Y'all know how I like to do.
I'm sure it ain't too loud. Good afternoon. It's, it's been a long day. First off, I'd just like to start by uh, letting you guys know that uh, it's a lot of information that you guys should be privy to, I believe. And uh, one thing that I believe that you have not been privy to is the truth of your rights and your duties being the jury. Um, the fact that you and you alone have the power. Not um, well prepared. Hey, men, Delilah. Men, welcome, welcome. Well prepared and clearly rehearsed uh, speeches and, and exhibits. Oh, thank you, Kimmy. A lot of theatrics. Frankly, not the judge. You and you alone have the power. You and you alone decide what is truth and what isn't truth. <laughs> you should be informed that you have the power to nullify any law that you don't agree with. Objection. Move to strike the statement. Sustained. Objection. I will strike from the record the last statement made by the defendant. Is my music too loud? I can cut it down a little bit. I want to make sure y'all can hear. But I still have the dramatic effect. Let me cut down just a little bit. The jury which will is, disregard it. Which is clearly what I've been saying. I believe that not only is it fair, but it's essential that you be privy to all knowledge, not knowledge that certain people feel that you should hear and shouldn't hear disguised under the color of law uh, the fact that the matter is just like I did with uh, my opening uh, statements I don't have a well prepared or rehearsed speech we know <laughs> I didn't look in the mirror and say certain points to myself over and over again to make sure I have them right or clearly anything like that. Clearly, I chose to speak from the heart. Oh. Um, in my opening statements, and now I'm going to speak from the heart. What you won't hear me do is argue facts. You can't. Facts are against the you. Reason you won't hear me argue facts. Because you're guilty. Is because I believe no. that it takes away from what should be recognized. Oh, okay. The tragedy of this event. Oh. It should be recognized. Oh. <clears throat> Trying to argue facts of this, facts of that. Uh huh. I'm not going to waste your time doing that. Uh huh. Hold on. So didn't he know that's what a defense is for? And then what it, it, it that's what a defense is for. To argue this okay, I'm 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 gonna be quiet. Lord. It's a little emotional. Oh yes, I emotional. apologize for the long pause. Oh, okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm. <laughs> It's hard to keep everything together emotionally. Oh. Uh, and honestly, I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. I have any more tears left. Oh. It's, it's been a hard year. Oh. Uh, for the families. Uh -huh. Mostly. Mostly, right, right. And that should not be lost on, on anyone. Mm. It shouldn't be taken away. Mm. Mm. 
I said it before and I'll say it again. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of people that are, are healing, mm. that are attempting to heal. Mm. And you have made that worse. <laughs> Sorry for the long pause. That opens the door to talk about uh, forgiveness for a little bit. Mm. With every healing process, there comes a, a forgiving process. But what are they forgiving if you didn't do anything and it wasn't you? So what are they forgiving? Why would they need to forgive anything, alleged defendant? I'm confused. It's not an easy thing huh. for anyone. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Come on. Come on. Hold it together. Uh, what you've been hearing huh. from the prosecution. Uh-huh. Not to take anywhere with uh, anything away from them. Uh-huh. But let's call it what it is. You've been hearing a lot of rerun. Rerun. Same things over and over and over. No different than. So y'all notice that he's talking about rerun and that he's doing the little uh motion of like a circle and you are being tried for running people over in a vehicle are you kidding me the irony of this what a dumbass you turn on the radio and you first hear that song that you don't like when you first hear it i still hate you but they play it so much that eventually you start saying it the words to yourself before you even realize bitch we've been watching you for over a year and we still hate you we hated you the first day we came into contact with you and we still hate you still so no matter how many times i hear this song i still hate the song i hate you and then you sit and you go i hate that song I, I, I hate you yeah the world That's hates you happening Rerun mm. over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Oh, like you reran over and over and over and over and over all those people. If you ran over, rerun over and over and over and over the band and the grannies. Rerun over and over and they right. Okay, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Tend to make things stick in your head. That's uh-huh. not true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why do I say? What am I saying? I don't know. I don't think you know either. Say, so look at the testimony. Okay. You know, the, the, the thing from the prosecution here has been uh-huh. intent, 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 intent. Right. Element to the, to the case, intent. We all know what's been said. Mm-hmm. We all know the picture that's been painted. The true picture. Even the prosecution said it themselves. How can you look in somebody's head and say, this is what they intended to do? Because you did it. The hell? You know, for, for a year, I've, I've sat and gone through this. Uh huh. Feeling so powerless. Oh. You know, Baby. Letting other people run with the narratives. Oh. Oh. Sitting back helpless while other people paint a picture. Oh. That has zero truth. Zero. 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 Look, it has zero truth, but you're on camera, you're on video, and we see you, but it's a lie. Gotcha. I understand about healing myself. Uh Uh-huh. Tragedy, pain, Pain. all All that. All that. A lot of it, there's no need to get into. Right. I myself in my own life have had to do a lot of healing. Oh. 
as a man with children myself. Boy, bye. Your kids hate you. I find it hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Come on, muster some tears. Convince me. Yeah, anyone who's really had conversations with me, spent time around me. Uh -huh. Would think for one second that this is an intentional act. Oh. No, remember, he keeps the, all his kids on the back half of the week, remember? Except for the, the son, because the son is grown. So he keeps our son away, who's in Georgia, Missy, who's in Iowa, and um, that's a three. Missy, our son away, and then the boy. So you keep the, 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 the girls from two different states, they stay with him. Remember? I've never heard of someone intentionally trying to hurt someone while attempting to blow their horn. Oh, blow their horn, blow their horn. Well, uh, hmm. attempting to alert people of their presence. Oh, okay. But you said it would to you what hmm. more information that I believe that you should have been privy to. Hmm. And I'm sure that hmm. the prosecution will beg to differ. But the fact of the matter is uh -huh. The vehicle in question. The vehicle. Make a model of 2010. 2010. Hey, Andrea. Escape. Ford Escape. The vehicle in question. The vehicle. Actually, 2008, 2009, and 2010 of that model. Oh, thank you, T.S. Objection. Misstatement of the facts. Facts not in evidence. Was in it's fact. Sustained. Was in fact recalled lies was in fact a class action lawsuit against ford lies. for those model for those model vehicles mm -hmm. the information that you should have been privy to but you weren't allowed to be privy to why i don't know <laughs> oh you don't know huh <laughs> that information malfunctioning throttle bodies. Ah. Mr. Brooks, move out. It's the information that you should have been privy to. Mm. Vehicles that malfunction and accelerate not being able to be stopped. Mm. It's information. It's information. Hold on. Go ahead. Just strike statements by Sorry for the interruption. Facts not in evidence. Your Honor, please give me his statement. You know, and that would have been amazing had he brought this up way earlier on and actually made this a defense. Maybe this could have flown if you did that, but whatever. Sustained. How's it a misstatement when I have the information? Ah. Uh, Mr. Brooks, move on. This is information that I feel like you needed to know. You should have known. Look at his mouth information that was taken away from you. Oh, like the lies were taken away from their family. Why, to prove a case? Oh, because you're the victim. Information that you definitely should have been privy to. No, you are not the only one that noticed that. He definitely has shark eyes. You are absolutely spot on with that one. DA says, the defendant has an utter disregard for human life. Uh -huh. Utter disregard for uh -huh. human life. Uh -huh.
not realizing it. Yeah, Jay Prince, like, I can't deal with this shit. That has, again, has children. They hate you, yes. Talking about someone that watched their children come out of the womb and be born into this world, cut the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord. Held them before their mom even did. And that was the last time you, you talked to them or saw them. Moments that I'll never forget. The only moments that you got. And yet they say disregard, utter disregard for human life. Correct. <clears throat> Come on. Squeeze out a tear. Come on. Work it, work yourself up for a tear. See, he winding up. Yes, the unbiblical cord. Yes. <laughs> they made reference to a rage. Yes. As if they were, or if this particular DA was right there, standing right there. Bitch, you was on camera. We was all there. We, we saw you on camera. As if this DA is a psychiatrist. I said to myself, well, rage, what do you mean rage? Really? Really? That's a serious question. How can you characterize that? Really? How can you have the audacity to diagnose what someone's brain is? Where it's at, what it's thinking, why it thinks the way it does. This boy is stupid as hell. DA makes references to blocks of no one being injured, but then says it's intentional. Oh, okay. I told you, what enough people? It's the numbers. You add that up with the supposed rage. Uh huh. The supposed intent. Uh huh. To harm and kill. And what you did? Yes. Yes. And it doesn't it doesn't kick in until well within blocks. But when it kicked in, it kicked in, boy. And maybe it's just me, but I would think if I was characterizing someone with this intent to kill and in this and this this rage and this anger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And why weren't people immediately harmed? Oh! Why was someone with intent to kill and rage try to alert people of their presence? But you didn't stop. Their horn? But you didn't stop. You heard a detective, if you recall, mm -hmm. testify mm -hmm. that the vehicle that he observed was the not vehicle. only honking his horn, but was not speeding. Oh! Okay. That's good. So where does this rage kick in? We run over this, the band. This <laughs> insatiable intent to kill kick in. The band. We ran over the band. They speak as someone who's known someone for years. Well, bitch, we know your criminal record. And then we know the people who have known you for years didn't show up to your sentencing hearing to speak on your behalf. But anyway, let's continue. Which brings me back to the vehicle. What if the vehicle couldn't stop because the of the vehicle? Mm -hmm. What if, what if, what if the driver of the vehicle was unable to stop the vehicle? Hmm, what reindeer could fly? Because of that fact, what if the driver may have panicked? Well, now we know you panicked. <laughs> we know that happened. And make the driver a, a crazed or not crazed, a, 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 a rage. Does that make the driver in a rage and mm -hmm. intent on killing people? I mean, but you killed them though. So, yeah.
DA played a exhibit 17. Mm-hmm. You don't see anyone struck in that vehicle. Oh! On that exhibit, you don't see anyone struck. But we see a whole video of you striking bunches of people and see Jane Kulik on the hood and see Jordan Sparks on the hood. What the fuck are you talking about? With someone who had this intent to kill. Right. This rage. Mm-hmm. As, as she says. If that was their intent, would they have taken the opportunity to as many people as they could? I told y'all, that's what it is. It is the, the amount of numbers. He said, I only killed six and injured 76. The uh, the other ones, there were hundreds of people there, hundreds, thousands of people there, and they weren't injured. So if you look at the numbers, it wasn't high enough to say that I intended on killing somebody. You see, I told y'all. Target people, mow mm -hmm. down people. You did? All of that, you did. Reference was made to this vehicle. Vehicle. The damage. Says this was all caused by bodies, but then later turns around and says, what? Hits barricades and other objects. Prefer testimony about hearing loud crashes and, what? And, and, and things of that nature. But what? the DA wants you to believe that this all came from people. What? That's really not your argument, was it? Look at Evidence Aubrey. doesn't support that. That's really his argument. That was really his argument. So I go back to trying to wrap my head around everything that's happened in the last year. It's a big head. Praying for those families, praying for the people that tragically lost their life because that should not be lost either. The fact that there was lives lost and all the emphasis has been put on the alleged defendant. Alleged defendant. And the people have been disregarding it. Oh. Makes me wonder, does the DA even care about those people? <laughs> Gaslighting the DA. <laughs> Up like this bastard. There's been prayers going up every day. And they're going nowhere. Because God hates you. It's been suffering on both sides. Oh, both sides. It's been threats, hate mail. Then you deserve all of it. All of it. Because of the narratives that's been put out there. The misconceptions that have been put out there. The video of my face. The lies that have been put out there. Me on multiple lies pictures. That have caused my children not to be able to go to school. Oh, no. How would you know? To be bullied. Oh. For my mother to have to leave her home and stay at a hotel because she's afraid for her safety. But bitch, you said that that wasn't her home, remember? You said that she owns the property, but you live in the house and you're paying the mortgage on that house, remember? Because she gets hate mail shoved through her, her mailbox. Okay. My nieces and nephews to fear for their safety. Well, well, no, that from the, from the safety from you because you tried to do at your nephew. Remember, that's why you couldn't be in the house because you tried to shoot your nephew. You did a drive by on. This bitch. 
which been equally hard. Equally hard. It's not only having to answer questions from my daughter who was seven at the time, my baby, my baby girl, uh -huh. seven at the time. Right, right. Is now eight. Attempting to ask, answer her questions that she's asking and still continue to shield her from what she sees, what she hears. What your, the mama need to do is shield her from you. Just from you. Just you. Having a newborn son. Oh, the grandson. That I haven't even been able to meet. Yeah, that's the daddy, daddy, daddy's girl, yes. I haven't been able to hold, touch, kiss. Oh. Having to navigate. Oh. Everything that comes with this whole situation. Except accountability. Except remorse. Except human decency. I'm still attempting to wrap my head around it. Oh, again, it's a big head. I can't honestly say how many times I've sat in my cell, especially during lights out alone, mm -hmm. where it's just you. And just been. <laughs> praying and asking myself how could this happen you're a bitch that's how it happened not just for the people but for everybody involved the community too how could this happen how it's the community fault so it's the community's fault that you ran into a parade and you you decide to you know press the gas mash the gas and continue to drive over people we're confused by this how how are we confused no. <clears throat> i'm a victim of circumstance it wasn't my fault the hardest questions you can ask is those that don't have an answer this got an answer though. So this is pretty easy. You on camera. No matter how much thinking you do, no matter how much you try to look at it from different perspectives and listen to other outside perspectives and listen to people that you trust and that you love. <laughs> still coming up with nothing oh no no nothing but to think for one second one 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 question i never had to ask x was if this was intentional that's something that never even i never asked once because you don't give a shit. that's why you didn't ask it because I know it wasn't. As a matter of fact, it never even crossed my mind to even attempt to ask myself that because I know it wasn't. Come on, work up some tears. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on these tears. Come on. And I know sometimes during this trial probably doesn't show. It don't. May be hard to believe. I don't. But trust me when I say no one outside of the families that had to go through this, no one's heart is more in pieces than mine. Lie.
Come on. Come on. Let's get some tears going. So can I go back to all these exhibits? Exhibits. All these exhibits. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was hard. I know. Go back to everything that's been shown, everything mm -hmm. that's been testified to. Mm hmm. everything you've heard mm -hmm. during this whole process this trial mm -hmm. and again i say the same thing that i said earlier what same thing i said in opening statements but you're a piece of shit. oh you didn't say that i said that <laughs> not reading from any paper you need to books you should everything you've heard open this statements everything you're hearing now is from right here it's bullshit yeah everything yeah bullshit You have the decision. Mm-hmm. You and you alone. All of you. Mm -hmm. You have the decision. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you've taken a lot of notes during this process. I didn't know. I ain't taking none. Oh, thank you, T.S. Some days are longer than others. Mm-hmm. Because of you. A lot of movement in and out of the courtroom for various reasons. Remember the power that you have. Don't for one second let it be taken away from you. No, oh, they know the power they have. <laughs> mm, they know. I can never understand the position of sitting on a jury in, in, in something of this magnitude so I, I i'm sure there's a lot of pressure well yeah you wouldn't know about sitting on a jury because you're always the defendant the defendant that's why you would never know about being on a jury because you're always the one that they are deliberating for or on I pray that the right decision is made. It was. It was. The right decision. It was. Hey, Saint. It's almost like that, um, that message. Oh Lord. Well, not message, but that writing. Mm, mm, mm. We're in our vehicles, and it, you got that rearview mirror, and it said things are closer than they appear. Bitch, another, another car analogy. Another car. Do you really think that you need to be talking about shit like this? And you are being your own trial for seventy-six crimes regarding and Tim the deadly weapon and that deadly weapon being a vehicle you really think that <laughs> uh, okay. but it's also another way of saying sometimes things aren't as they appear oh except for this though this is exactly how it appears <laughs> hmm 
Look, the government went on a witch hunt and found witches. <laughs> <sighs> found witches. I can't speak for anyone else, but me, myself, I believe in Jesus Christ. Well, yeah. That's how I was raised. That's what I believe in. Good for you. Good for you. None of us are perfect. Yeah, that's true. Finally, we told the truth. I try every day to make sure that I acknowledge him. Oh! That's why every time I step in this courtroom, uh -huh. I have my Bible with me everywhere I go. Wonderful. I even read it on breaks, recesses. Mm. 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 This is not something that started at the beginning of this incident. This is something that has been instilled in me since I came out of the womb. Y'all making making Christianity look bad with this one. That's a bad this one. This is how my family lives their life. This is how we was raised. I can't tell. I can't tell. Come on, come on, let's get some tears. Whatever mistakes that mm -hmm. I myself have made in my life, I've made peace with, with God. Mm. Made peace. Made peace. So y'all don't care about y'all feelings. And y'all mama. And grandmama say that my conscience is clear. That's right. I don't give two shits about it. I know I'm going up the booty hole. And because I believe, I trust him with my life. Mm. Thank you, Costa. Nobody will never know why it was his will for this to happen. Oh, it was his will. Oh, God's will for you to act like a dumbass. Got it. A lot of lives were changed that day. Yeah. Uh, included. Who cares about yours? God's way is not our own. Okay. Okay. No matter how much sometimes we want to question, uh huh, you have to have faith. Have faith. I think the jury restored some faith. Guess that was his will too. Your bitch ass to be under the jail. Inside yourself. Mm -hmm. When a hero comes alone, we can size it and be strong. Look inside yourself and make mm -hmm. a legacy. Because the hero lies in you. Come on. inside your heart. This is the case that I love the Lord, but I learned a lot from Satan. You have everything in your hands now. Mm-hmm. Everything. Your balls included. 
tears. Where the tears at? His eyes just is dry. Okay. Ain't no moisture. It was right. Oh, that's moist as ass. It was right. They did. They did. Don't let the smoke and mirrors take away your power. Mm-hmm. Don't let the theatrics take away your power. Well, you brought the theatrics, so. Each and every one of you has a decision. Mm-hmm. And they made it. A decision, too. right they will not one tear has fallen make the right decision they can't not one tear them eyes is dry those eyes are dry hard to think about my younger kids getting older and <laughs> at some point having to explain everything to them well you wouldn't be doing it anyway <laughs> dumbass stay kids forever you would know Nowadays, kids is frankly a lot smarter than we were when we was kids. Well, you're Say an idiot. Much. Uh, yeah, you're an idiot. So. Yeah. Come on, Munchkin. I got a letter the other day. Uh huh. My youngest daughter. Lies. And she's still learning cursive right now, so lies. Best writer when it comes to cursive. So she's seven years old. They don't teach cursive anymore. Lies. She'd rather print. She said, "Dad, Dad." And this is from the letter. She this said, is from Dad. the letter. Are people saying all these mean things about you? Because it's true. <laughs> That's your response. It's because it's true. I haven't read. So y'all see his nose is running. The nose is running. No tears. Hold on. I haven't read the rest of that yet letter yet. So she's the best writer when it comes to cursive. She'd rather print. She said that. Dad. And this is from the letter. She said that. The letter, yeah, man. Yeah. Why are people saying all these is a bunch? No tears. I haven't read the rest of that yet letter yet. How? How? If the girl was seven at the time, how long could the letter be? It's not like 
<laughs> it's not like a Jody Arias 19 page letter that you're going to be getting from her. She's seven. What? what? So you read the one line about these mean things about you and then you stopped? How did it from her anyway? You a lion. Oh, you a lion. Leprechaun dumps the juice. You just the biggest liar. If you had said Arsenaway did it, this might be more convincing, not the seven year old. Baby, stop. Stop. I'm not convinced, sir. That sentence said. Yeah, I'm not convinced. That's not the dad I know. It's the dad. Because she don't know you. That's why the dad and she know. Because she don't know you. None of your kids know you. <laughs> oh. oh. Neo Ho. I think I learned cursive in what? Fourth grade? To my start. Throughout this year, I've been called a lot of things. Mm -hmm. A bitch, a loser, a liar, a hoe. And to be fair, I am a lot yep, of things. Yep, you are. You all of those things and more. A murderer is not. Mm, I disagree with you, sir. Never has been, never will be. No, it is. Demented Keebler Elf, it is. Ugh! Ew! Those seven-year-olds writing no cursive. Seven-year-old still struggling to uh to read full sentences and comprehend them. So before I close, please close. Statement. Mm -hmm. Close these lies. want to say open your heart mm-hmm because the hero comes along go inside yourself mm -hmm. man, this is that's it. right There's a hero If you look inside your heart You don't have to be afraid Of what you are <laughs> I have no fear mm -hmm. Right? Mm. With you, no, it's right. They did. They did. You know it's right. Mm hmm. Think about everything you've heard. Mm -hmm. Think about everything you haven't been privileged to hear. Mm -hmm. Everything that I haven't been privileged to hear. Okay. Think about the whole entire picture. We got it. You really want us to do that? Does you really want?
above everything. Whatever you decide, mm -hmm. make sure you yourself can live with it. Oh, baby. <laughs> I think that they make come. Sure you can live with it. They're comfortable. They got a good night's sleep when they did that guilty verdict. Three hours. The magnitude of the poverty. Mm -hmm. Thirteen hundred. Just like this tissue is in my hand. This is everything. You have everything. You have everything. Tissue's everything. Hmm. Interesting. Be at peace with what you decide. Oh, baby. Had no regrets. Okay. We know. And no tears either. Don't let this decision weigh on you after it's over. Oh, <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Hopefully, we got a long, lot, lot of living ahead of us. Mm, except for the people you kill. Yeah. Lord willing. Mm-hmm. You got 1300 Don't look back and kick yourself in the behind. I think they succeeded in that. It's been about three weeks with you. Mm-hmm. That was the best night's sleep they had. A lot of courage and a lot of guts to pause your life for this. For this. To put important things on hold. Mm -hmm. to, to basically stop your life. Yeah. You should be commended for being able to sit up here with this amount of pressure. Child, please. I want you guys to know that's not lost on me. I'm sure it's a lot. But you did a lot. I should be commended because it, it, it took courage to do this. I don't know, but I would bet a lot of people wouldn't want to be sitting in your position right now. I think a lot of people would love to be in their position right now. And you guys had the guts to do it. Thank you for that. Oh. Thank you for taking pretty much a month and setting it to the side for this. Well, it would have been like a week, but you acted a fool. I know it's probably not proper, but you, you guys deserve a round of applause if you could give one. There you go. Round of applause. Thank you guys sincerely. And and I know and I and I have faith and I trust. You guys know what's right. Yes. <laughs> Everybody knows what's right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Interesting. It's crazy to say guys. Yeah, yeah. I believe in your, you know what's right. Mm -hmm. Yep, we all know what's right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, before I give the state an opportunity um, to present rebuttal, Stand for a minute, so please stand. We put the dirty diaper back on. Ugh.
gross. Please, and Attorney Apparai did time both closings. You have 13.28 left. Oh. Thank you, Judge. I don't think that'll be an issue. Gross. Stop him, Opper. Folks, let me just say this. Mr. Brooks stands here and professes to speak to you from his heart. He plays on your sympathy. Mm. He talks about his talks about the hardships that he's encountered and his family's encountered. And he brushes over the loss to the community. He wants to talk about how he's never held his newborn son. Never once acknowledges the Sorensen family. Nope. The Owen family. Nope. The Duran family. Nope. The Hospital family. Nope. The Kulik family. Nope. Sparks family. At all. Never once. It's nice that Mr. Brooks can get letters from his loved ones. I don't know why he did this. I told you that. But actions define a person. It's that simple. You can stand with the Bible in your hands all day long and profess to be the finest man under God that you can be. But when you drive through a parade route and roll over children, mm. children with band instruments to the extent that your vehicle heaves up and down, your intent is known, Mr. Brooks. It doesn't have to be guessed. It's known. You don't have to stand and wonder as he claims to. What? Uh, okay. For him to keep going after he drove over those children in the band and have Jackson Sparks fly off the front hood of his car, lifeless, mm. and keep going. And have Jane Kulik fly off the light the car, run her over, and keep going. I'm not going to go on. You get it. You need to look in the mirror, Mr. Brooks. If you want to accuse me of practicing my closing <clears throat> argument, you need to look in the mirror, sir. Your actions are that of a murderer. You murdered these six people. You endangered the safety of 61 others. There are 68 victims in this case, folks. That's not an accident. That's not a, gee, I woke up one day and don't know myself in this position. If you have some explaining to do to your children, Mr. Brooks, I recommend you do it. We've got to contact them first. <laughs> now, members of the jury, the oh police, Lord, the parties in the court have been performed. By the parties, the court has instructed you regarding the rules of law, which should govern you in your deliberations. Okay. The time has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Him. Yeah, exactly. Mic drop. All right, people. I have been up here for almost five hours, and we all need to. Go and get some breath, go and eat our turkey and um and have to spend time with family and whatnot. And I hope that you guys enjoy our live jive, jive turkey that we had tonight for um Thanksgiving Eve. And I do want to apologize. I I know skip this live stream, but then I have uh rescheduled and rescheduled it but you know if i don't feel well i'll just reschedule it but i was like i have to come tonight so anyway, i want to thank all of you guys for coming this evening it's been time with me tonight thank you for all the people who has chit chat 
all the people who has put uh, has donated. I really appreciate all of you so very much. Please continue to discuss in my comment section. You know, I always try to respond back to you. Um, what else I want to say? Um, and so I'm going to come back next week sometime. And I don't know, I'll pick another day to do something. Um, let's see what we'll do. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just see. But anyway, have a good night, everybody. I love you, love you, love you so much. I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming by. And the one last thing, and that is, please. Drums, please. 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 Yeah.